Hey, this is Zach Allegan, and you're listening to The Movie Dumpster. Hey, what's up, and welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 6, Episode 17. Today we're talking about Gremlins from 1984, directed by Joe Dante. And is this movie the perfect gateway horror film? We're going to find out. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. And you're rolling with Rock and Rick Rialto, the voice of Kingston Falls, USA. Christmas and the snow's coming down. Yeah, kick up the Darlene Love, dude. Yeah. <laughs> of course, with yeah. gremlins, naturally. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, dude. Get the, get the snow in, you know, pour it all over the town, have that uh, the music playing in the background while uh, your head's ripped off by a creature. Exactly. Get that sweet little cuddly uh, creature for Christmas, and but don't feed it after midnight, dude. There's some rules you got to follow. Uh, you better follow them succinctly and accurately <laughs> or else you're going to have a serious fucking problem. But yeah, before we get into the Mogwai metamorphosis, uh, if you want more Movie Dumpster content, you can check us out at patreon.com slash movie dumpster. You can get an ad free audio version of the show for only $2 a month and you can support your favorite show. How's that sound? And for no money at all, you can like this video if you're watching on YouTube or share it with your friends. It really does help. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, leave us that five stars or maybe even a review if you got the time. It really does help grow this dumpster community and get the show out to uh, more people. We really appreciate it. That'd be great. And if you want to keep up on the whereabouts of the Dumpster Boys, you can go to MovieDumpsterPodcast.com or you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on all your favorite social media apps. Um, Yeah, on that website, you can find out where we're going to be at events, what the latest episode is. You can watch it or you can listen to it on your favorite podcast app. Or you can check out the store, get yourself some good stuff, get a couple stocking stuffers. You know what I'm talking about? A little Movie Dumpster knit cap, a little, little nice little Fallen Empire t-shirt, little MD logo shirt maybe. I don't know. Merry Christmas. There you go. Sean, the Joe Dante classic. Oh, Grandma. wow. <laughs> yeah. The uh, absolute classic. The the Christmas classic, even though you could watch it any time of the year, but this is definitely a Christmas movie classic. So I guess let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. Um, I love Gremlins. Yeah, me In too. case you didn't see <laughs> all the stuff on the table, there was a, a myriad of things that I chose not to place on the table because it would have just been too much. <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to like make us out or, or see what we're saying, no. hear what we're saying. We can't even see each other through this stripe that's going on right uh, here. Right, stripe. Not to be confused with uh, whatever else I'd called them previously. I can't even remember. <laughs> I know it was wrong, though. Spike. Spike, that's He's what it was. Spike. He's called Spike for a while there. Um, I only the- saw the movie a hundred times, but he's Spike. <laughs> Uh, we even got like a backpack. That's always there all year, that that that's uh, striped backpack oh, back yeah. there. Yeah. This is, you know, we talk a lot. I talk a lot about Little Rubber Monster movies and where <laughs> yep. my love comes from. And this is definitely one of the most influential of the bunch. I absolutely love this movie. I used to watch it all the time as a kid, um, even the sequel, too. But um, what was your experience with Gremlins? I mean, this is definitely one we had on constant rotation. Yeah. We did watch it not just around Christmas, but mostly around Christmas yeah. in the O'Rourke household. But that uh, that tape with all these movies on it, my dad was big on that. I've probably talked about that uh, in episodes previously, but he always had like the EP tapes with like eight things on there. Yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, Gremlins was one of those tapes that was, it was probably Gremlins 1 and 2 and something else <laughs> on there, but we were always watching the Gremlins portion. Yeah. Uh, like two a lot too, but uh, one was the one we always watched. There you Me go, and my man. brothers, yeah. I So just... To get it right out in the open, Gremlins is my favorite of the the two movies. Okay, yeah. But I would only watch it around Christmas time. I can't, you know, you know me and my seasonal movie thing. <laughs> I have this weird thing where I can only watch certain movies during the certain times of the year, and I look forward to them all year. Right. You, you put Gremlins two on the wait list. It's got to be watched closer to like the summer, right? You <laughs> well, know, the, well, the springtime. Gremlins two is one you could kind of throw on any time of the year. Yeah, fair, fair. You know, um, and when I was a kid, I had. Gremlins 2 on tape and I wore that tape out. Okay. Like I I I watched Gremlins 2 all the time. But I do love the first movie uh more than the second one. I, I would agree. I like uh, again, I like both, but one is definitely my preferred of the two. Yeah. I mean, two is good, don't get me wrong. It's wacky and crazy and I love it. 
Uh, but it, it's one of the best sequels ever, I would argue, right up there with like Terminator 2, <laughs> Gremlins 2, Terminator Seriously, 2, Godfather no. 2. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it understood its assignment. It didn't overthink it. It, it took the ideas presented in this first film that we're going to talk yeah. about in this episode and it it either evolved them kind of on some level or at least took them in directions that were interesting when it could have been a total fucking stinker that we wouldn't be talking about to this day. But they figured it out. Also true. And just, just as a as a Gremlins 2 side tangent that sure. like like we'll probably get to that eventually yeah but the fact of the matter is is like it was go big or go home with that and just let's go fucking nuts with it there's also there's a conversation on some level I feel like we've even had on this show where it's like if we're gonna do Joe Dante what are the big ones we want to cover first yeah. and like again Gremlins 2 great movie but there's a couple other Dante after this one that I'd like to hit up first well we were supposed to do the howling first oh yeah we, we but were we, talking we about went that. straight for the jugular with Gremlins right um, but we're gonna talk we're gonna uh, in, in a um, in an orbit we're gonna talk about a little bit of uh joe dante's uh filmography sure but, yeah. um but gremlins yeah um total oddball film conceived by christopher columbus right not the italian explorer right yeah uh thank god for that no yeah the the writer slash director who's worked on many many yes. at this point classic films like home alone home alone 2 the first three fucking uh harry, harry potter, potter movies, movies. Uh, and many, I don't know why those are the five that jumped to mind. I mean, but... those are the, those are some of the bigger, the bigger yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a Chris Columbus joint. Um, so what happened was, uh, Chris Columbus, uh, wrote this script, uh, about, uh, gremlins. <laughs> right. <laughs> loosely, not, not loosely based on, but sort of inspired by the Roald Dahl book. Huh. And then uh, Steven Spielberg, Spielberg was like, oh, shit, uh, this is one of the most original scripts I've ever read in my life. I'm going to make it into a movie. And originally, and originally, Steven uh, wanted Tim Burton to direct Gremlins. Oh, OK. Man, that would have been interesting. What a completely different movie that would have been. Ah, uh, you need Joe Dante on this one, but I that's one I would have liked to at least maybe see a... Uh, uh, <laughs> A script, if nothing else, you know, just to kind of picture what was uh, in Tim's mind. I don't know. I don't need it. I'm just uh, curious. I, I don't need it. Yeah. I don't want, I, certainly not now, I don't want well, Tim right, Burton's yeah, Gremlins. Well. But, like, Joe Dante has such a specific feel. Oh, yeah. And, a, it, like, when you, when you see, when you watch a Joe Dante movie, you're like, okay, this is a Joe Dante movie. Yeah. There are hallmarks there that I absolutely love. Joe Dante is one of my favorite directors, He, he has way. a very specific style of humor that he puts into his films also. Humor, uh, lighting, right. and cinematography. Those are, the, like, those two, those are two big ones that um, I feel like influence a lot of the decisions that I make mm. and in how I like to light and shoot things mm -hmm. as well. You I have to have I, those Venetian blinds, Joe, oh with man, the light coming They through. are so good. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. He's kind of known for that, that right? It's a hallmark. It's a, it's a Dante hallmark for sure. They're in every fucking movie that he's done. I mean, the howling is the the, the kind of the crown jewel from for that particular yeah. hyper-specific shot, but hey, you know what I'm talking but about. It, it feels good because just, I guess, Venetian blind side tangent real quick. <laughs> it's a good side tangent it to always, have. It always feels natural. Yes. Like... We're in the room. Like, we're really yeah, in the yeah. room with the characters, right? Like, the lights that's coming through the windows or the moonlight or the sunlight, whatever it may be. Um, and it sets a whole specific mood for those scenes. Even And they can go from horror to comedy, and they could still all feel very specific, but also, like, the same but different at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. So, during the Twilight Zone movie... When that was being worked on, because Joe Dante had worked on that, he did the um, the segment with the little boy. Right. Uh, the, the 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 I forget who plays the little boy, but it's the classic episode with uh, the kid. Why is his name escaping me? Oh my god, Bill Mooney from uh, Lost in Space was the original. Yeah, and then Kevin McCarthy <laughs> is in that. Yeah, as the guy who basically gets fucking sent to the cornfields. Right. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. Well. Well. Or in the original. In the original. No. 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 Kevin McCarthy's in the. In, well, which one are you talking about? I haven't actually seen the Twilight Zone movie. I think okay. I've mentioned that previously. Okay, so you don't know what I'm talking but about. But I, I know of the 
the not segments. skit the segment because I've seen the original Twilight Zone multiple times. Okay, this one is about a I, I forget the name of it. Excuse me, but it's the segment where the little boy can imagine things yep. and they come true. Yeah, Bill Mooney is him in the original is what it's based on. Oh, okay. Who's uh, the little kid in Lost in Space? Will Robinson from Lost. Oh, in okay, Space. there you go. You know, I, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. I had to get there. Yeah. I got to remember his name. Yeah, Kevin yeah, McCarthy yeah. is one of the victims. Right in the original, the there's kid... there's an old man yeah. who yells at him and gets turned into a Jack in the Box. I'm assuming that's what happens to that, Kevin McCarthy. That old man, yes. No, okay. that's not what happens to oh. him. It's even better than that, okay. so we'll get there. We eventually. should cover that because I love fucking Twilight Zone and we haven't talked about it really at all. But anyway, continue. I know the baggage that Twilight Zone carries and we will briefly touch on it when we do that film, but there's yes, so but there's many... a hundred episodes of one of the best shows ever also attached to it. So but, but like there are so many good things to yeah, talk about yeah. about that movie um that I feel like constantly gets overlooked because of that. Sure. No, I would agree. Um, but that from was what the, I know, but that was Joe Dante's segment. Yes. Um, and that feels very Dante as well. I, I could imagine, just based on that original version, I can kind of assume some things that he probably did yeah. that fit his style. Yeah. yeah. So Stephen sees that. that segment and some of the other films he's made, The Howling specifically. Mm. And, was the uh, Burbs out by then? Not yet. Okay. Okay. I, well, when did the Burbs come out? Burbs was eighty. I guess that was after Gremlins. Yeah. Yeah. yeah eighty six yeah. or eighty eight. Mm. I don't know. I don't. Don't quote me on that. Sure. But he's like Joe Dante's the guy for the job f- to take on yeah. Gremlins. Um, so that's kind of how it all got started, man. And he's had a hell of a career since then. I, I want to say you could probably maybe speak to this more, but if I'm not mistaken, he was an editor originally, and then he kind of turned into this prolific director over the last couple decades. Um, Not even the last couple decades, dude. He used to work for Roger Corman. That's what it was, Corman. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah, a, yeah. Lot, a lot of uh, the directors that we know now and actors that we know now were made by Roger Corman, you know? I mean, even like... um. I mean, I, I feel I feel like uh, James Cameron yeah, has the, oh, has, yeah, yeah. has that uh, thing too, where um, Joe Dante did the original Piranha, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Which is funny you mentioned Cameron because what did he do two or three? He did or, two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he did. That's a, wow, that's, that's a that, side. T- that, that's another. That's another movie for that's another a, that's day. That's a side tangent inside a side tangent. Yeah. That's like a Russian doll <laughs> side tangent. That's a much uh, But yeah, that's just kind of interesting to to see that tr- the career trajectory. And you, I mean, you do, you're right. You do see that with a lot of people. Even you, you mentioned Tim Burton. He used to be an animator at fucking Disney, and now he's who he is. Yeah, totally. Uh, so I just I, that's an interesting path because we're both editors. Maybe you know, I don't know how you look at yourself, but like I edit is is what I do as a career, and mm-hmm. it's like kind of interesting to see someone that's in a similar position to me way early in his. Career career made these not gremlins the burbs fucking Mm -hmm. small soldiers the list goes on yeah 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 um dante as a whole Mm. i think is uh very good at the horror comedy balance yeah 100 percent. he's very 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 good at striking that balance and uh obviously with gremlins Mm -hmm. um and small soldiers too and that's more like comedy family, but yeah, there oh, are yeah. some dark elements to that film. <laughs> I would love to look at that one one day again. Maybe it's yeah. lower on the totem pole, but yeah. Small Soldiers is an interesting yeah. family film. And of course, The Burbs too. Like that yeah. leans more comedy, but there are some, there are like intentionally scary parts in that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Especially the climax of that film. Oh, he did another excellent film that I saw that was like newer. Mm. Um, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think it's called Not the Cellar, Not the Basement. It, it and I it might be the called, crawl space. It might be called the hole. I'm not okay, sure. Okay, okay. Um, but it's a Joe Dante joint, and it was a newer one, and I I, I had a really good time with it. And it was basically like this alternate dimension that's like in this kid's basement. Oh my god. Yeah. Before we get into like the other like trivia's like the music, like the music and stuff, and like the effects and stuff, I want to talk a little bit about um how like what what this was originally conceived as. Okay. Okay. So they always had the idea to not make it family friendly or child friendly it's child accessible it's not made for kids uh, does yeah, that make sense no that like even jurassic park you could maybe make that argument yeah. for there's some scary shit but like a five-year-old could probably be okay with this but yeah. it is not meant for kids but you can watch it no and there was a lot of there was a lot of backlash about this movie because of, of little kids being taken to the movies and getting the shit scared out of them. I would imagine the marketing probably was also a reason for that. Well, yeah. So there, it, it was marketed with Gizmo and the, yeah, the cute yeah. cuddly thing, and they thought it was like this more whimsical like E.T. joint. But that's kind of like, not to put myself in the shoes of the parents at the time, but yep. if I was a my age going to see a film like that, I would have loved that bait and switch of that, but I could see why people were pissed. 100%. I mean, this, this movie... And Temple of Doom were the two films that 
had Steven Spielberg suggest the PG thirteen rating. This was the this was the other one. Spielberg was pushing the DM envelope, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean because there are some pretty scary parts in this movie and like and a lot of violent more violence than you think about like i've yeah. watched this movie a million times Same, yeah. but like watching it to like analyze and talk about it on the show i'm like oh shit like damn there is some like vicious shit happening especially the scene with the the mom in the kitchen there is just shit yeah. they get away with cuz they're gremlins if yeah. that was a dog or a person there's no fucking way there are straight up fatal human fatalities yeah. in this movie yeah, there are but that scene in particular if you want to talk about shit that should not be in a kids quote unquote movie sure. you're like whoa microwave okay well hence PG-13 dude no one right. no one under uh, 13 a minute without a parent there you go yeah wink <laughs> wink yeah so to that point I wanted to talk about like the first version of the script was like way darker okay. than it than it was there was a part where uh, the whole and you just mentioned it uh, yeah, the the Bill, Billy's mom encounter she ends up getting decapitated by the gremlins and oh like God. her head is tossed down the flight of stairs and like falls at Billy's feet when oh, he comes home oh no yeah uh, well there is definitely some shock value there but I kind of like what we got but yeah that's that's totally different there's also there was also a scene where you know they sh- you know they they fuck with Barney the dog but they straight up like kill the dog and like eat it in the movie in the original script. I, I mean, hey, you know people die all the times in movies, but you know anytime an animal's hurt, there's like yeah. a different kind of gut reaction to that. So maybe it's good that he went with dad. But it makes me think of, think of critters, which is funny oh, because yeah. like that was kind of born out of Gremlins. Yeah, well, they actually did kill the dog kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But there was even a scene uh, that was going to take place in a McDonald's, and <laughs> it was going to be what's his face there? Yeah, Max there, dude, dancing on the dancing on the counter oh, in his teddy bear oh, outfit. Oh God, I mean, yeah, what was that guy from fucking talking about Critters Two with the moose shakes? That oh, oh Eddie Deason. Yeah, Eddie Deason's there at the Mickey D's. Oh, he's probably, but yeah, Mac is there with oh, the kid in the God, wheelchair. Yeah. yeah, and then the teddy bear costume, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and then the gremlins are there eating people. Yeah, e- eating Max foot off. There was a lot of there was a lot of like human and animal consumption in the original script. <laughs> uh, there is this. like one scene later when there's this total chaos where you see a lot of uh, silhouettes being attacked and presumably eaten, but you don't ever actually see it on screen. You're right. Yeah. So they toned it down for this, yeah, obviously. Okay, I mean, okay. they still retained a lot of the scariness, 100%, which we'll we'll get to, but um, the horror, rather. Right, and, yeah. um, so there was no stripe. There was no like bad gremlin gang. Were they just bad? Period. They were. It, Gizmo was supposed to grow. Was was supposed to go into a cocoon and become oh. a gremlin. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't even know what you call. I mean, they're mogwai, but they're like the transformed uh, version of the yeah, mogwai. Yeah, they're just gremlins, I guess, yeah. is for lack of a better term. Because no gremlin. one, even, no one even in the damn movie even knows what they are. Besides, yeah, Fodderman calls them gremlins. Yeah. He's talking technically about something well, else, but well, we're gonna get to that. They are the embodiment of what that is. Yes. And like Spielberg was like, "Fuck no!" Like you, you no, we're not making Gizmo. <laughs> Gizmo is like the golden piece of merchandising. Yeah, well, yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, and he's we're Pikachu. Not, yeah, he's Pikachu. We're not going to turn him into a gross monster. Like he has to stay cute and cuddly for the duration. Right. Well, actually, you know what's funny about that? Pikachu is actually now. Now he is. Granted, this was fifteen years, twenty years later. Yeah. But Pikachu was fat, looked a little like <laughs> lazy at first. The, the original game, and then they're like, you know, tighten him up a little. Tighten him up. Yeah. He, yeah. You went on a diet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got that thunderstone. Game Raichu. I gave him some. Ro- well, they didn't. I don't want to turn him into Raichu. We lose <laughs> money on that. I got to give oh, him some that, rare that's, that's candies. Right. Yeah, yeah. So another another thing I thought was fun uh, was this dropped the same day as Ghostbusters in 1984. What a competition when you think about. I it. I don't know, like, but they're two totally different movies. Yeah, and something can be said for the fact that like you're dropping a Christmas movie in the middle of June, which was. Kind of like in hindsight, it was stupid, but like it was one of like Gremlins was one of the most successful movies of 1984. It was like right. Beverly Hills Cop, Ghostbusters, and Gremlins, and something else. I forget. That's, and Temple of Doom. Oh, wow, yeah. that is crazy. I was gonna say like Predator Two was kind of got fucked because it was came out in a time that didn't make. I think that was actually around Christmas. And that was, was Thanksgiving. A and it's like, yeah, but you hear that about Gremlins, it's like crazy because you never really know. I guess I mean, yeah. if a movie's successful, it's going to be successful. But I, I do wonder, to your point, if this did drop like a November, if it would have been even more successful, or would something else have blown it out of the water? But if it was successful around fucking Indiana Jones and Ghostbusters, yeah. then it was meant to be because it was a time where like you could do original shit and it be like mm. this big 
blockbuster event, right? It's hard to nobody com- had done Ghostbusters. Correct. Nobody had done fucking Gremlins. Gremlins you know or, what I mean? Or Indiana Jones. Yeah. Really. Uh, well, the first one is already out. Uh, by well, that okay, time. Yeah. fair. The, uh, Temple, you said that. Yeah. But and Beverly Hills Cops, like one of the greatest comedies of all time. I, I just feel like comedy dramas. It's hard to compare to today. Maybe even like ten or fifteen years ago might be a better comparison. But I feel like. Maybe I'm just totally talking out of my ass here, but I feel like as just a person that goes to see movies in the theater, yeah. that it's just like very rarely, I mean, Barbenheimer is the closest thing I can even think of where two things came out that were like, everyone was either really excited to see or it was like in the zeitgeist to like, you were hearing all about it. it but you're right. It doesn't really happen that often. Like not that the, there aren't good movies that come out on top of each other, but you don't hear about it that often. I didn't see Barbie. I, I didn't actually see either of well, those well, films, saying, but I heard they were amazing, and there was all those, all all the attention. Yeah, you know, that's all I'm getting at. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see Barbie, and I didn't see Oppenheimer either. But like the idea of those being like blockbuster films right. to me doesn't make any sense because I feel like there's so much more wider appeal to all the movies that I just mentioned. <laughs> uh, listen, I agree with you. I'm just yeah. trying to think of a, a recent phenomenon outside of like, you know, the Marvel movies when they sure. were really hitting like three or four years ago yeah, the- that was like a similar situation where you could have those big movies coming out back to back to mm-hmm. back. Like when we were in high school, this was like, you know, going over 10 years ago at this point, I feel like it was happening more often. Yeah. Now it's like, you're right. Once in a while I get a, a big movie or in the summer maybe there might be some overlap. But generally speaking... Movies come out, they're either really good or they're not, and then people forget about yeah, them. Yeah, and like the the thing, the my whole thing, just to that point, my yeah, whole thing yeah. is like if we spent less money hmm. on more movies and more different ideas, the risk wouldn't be so high. I agree. You know what I mean? And we can have fun ideas like like gremlins, like gremlins, like. You would never think in a million years that that would be like a huge hit, and Not it yet. was, you know. And instead, like now, now it's so like manufactured and like, oh, that worked. That one thing we're gonna fucking <laughs> drive it into the ground. That's what happened with Marvel. Yeah, no, it's, literally, it's completely gone to shit in the past two years. To, to the point where now, not to go off <laughs> on that, but it's like now DC's literally got gun in charge, and he's yeah. literally has a, a a physical map that someone has, you know, on a computer <laughs> to look at. And say, okay, this goes to this and this, because so many other companies have fucked it up. Yeah. Uh, but just to bring it back to Gremlins in 1984, yeah. Yeah. It, like in comparison, it is kind of crazy to just say all that and say, but 40 years ago, which also is kind of crazy to oh say, but 40 years ago, shit like that 100% could happen. And, you know, again, Ghostbusters, Temple of Doom, fucking Gremlins are all yeah. great films and they were able to succeed uh, kind of walled together, I guess, on some level. It right? was magic hour, dude, I, I feel like. And like, Specifically, first and they're of all, all effects films. Yeah, but first of all, they're blockbusters. But first of all, like, imagine going to see Gremlins and Ghostbusters in the same weekend right. well, as I, like as like a twelve year old kid. I, I guess that that whole spiel I just gave that is my larger point. You're a hundred percent right. That would have blown my mind yeah. as a kid in 1984. Also, uh, you know, Gremlins and like Ghostbusters and stuff were coming out at a time where like the the new trend of combining comedy with your horror yeah you know kind of laughing and then there, there's still there still are horror elements to the movie oh yeah and it is a horror picture really but there's comedy surrounding all that and you have that with ghostbusters and you have it with gremlins and, the, and it's kind of the perfect marriage of the two and i think that's why both of those films work so well because you're kind of like when there's not something scary happening you're having a laugh yeah you know? and there's also especially in this movie <clears throat> moments where there is like scary or, or unsettling things happening but it's the gremlins being funny at the same time yeah because they're the fucking gremlins well, and they're it's, just they're, they're chaos uh, uh lots of dark humor yeah exactly there's a lot yeah. of dark humor they're like the embodiment of chaos that's yes. what I'm trying to say yeah. it, like there's just so many wacky as hell scenes that like when you take when you put yourself in the character's shoes that are be interacting with their gremlins it's like wow that's terrifying but as just an audience member it's fucking hilarious yeah. and like there's something to be said about like the gremlins are like the embodiment of like consumerism oh, and like yeah, addiction and like all these all these things we're not gonna get super deep like that because nah. like that is such like a 
That's a little deeper than I think even overtly intellectual thing that I think Joe Dante was going for, or even Chris Columbus. Like, sure. Sometimes it's just as simple as like, this is funny because this little weird creature smoking cigarettes and drinking beer and farting and puking and (laughs) killing shit. Well, I think even like with that said, I think kind of too leans into that a little bit, especially with like the main bad gremlin is just like the corporate CEO gremlin, pretty much. Uh, Yeah, which you know maybe was a reaction to that, or maybe it was just the way they wanted to go with it. Mm Uh, we got m- music by the uh, amazing Jerry Goldsmith oh, on yeah. this. Jerry Goldsmith always knocks it out of the park. He's one of my favorite composers. Um, and this is nothing short of amazing. Like I love this soundtrack is so good. It's playful, mm. it's fun, and it's fucking scary, dude. And there's all different variations of like the gremlin theme that run throughout the movie that I really love. Like it can be scary, but it also can be fun, and it also can be uh, sweet and caring, like with Gizmo's uh, uh, lullaby and things like right, that. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It's a tune that an earworm, I yeah, guess I'll it, even call it that. It, just in your head forever once I, you hear dude, it. I was fucking going, dun, 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 you know, like all day oh, after yeah. I watch this, and it's just like stuck in your head. It's you hard know? to get out of your head. You're not, you're not even really that mad about it, but it's hard to get out. Also, mega madness, but we'll get there. With that being said, uh, the special effects were done by Chris Wallace and his studio, and um. There is this awesome, awesome uh, account that I follow called Gremlins Museum. If you don't follow Gremlins Museum, go check them out. They're on Instagram, and I think they're on Facebook. But um, they collect all of the Gremlin memorabilia and puppets and props and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, Behind-the-scenes photos Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Um, And they're very generous about posting about it. Um, And again, Chris Wallace is just... So amazing, man. And like bringing these creatures to life and really making these a, a brand new, like iconic uh, monster yeah. to the film. Monster and even, I mean, a creature for, for that matter, because I wouldn't call Gizmo a monster per yeah, se. Yeah, the, the Mogwai and the Gremlins. Yeah, and the are Gremlins both, themselves. Both yeah. iconic. Because they, they have like, there's like elements of like, they're, they're scaly, they're reptilian, they're almost like sticky. Sticky. They're almost like fish like with their tails. Mm. Uh, almost like a weird, like, lobster dog uh, cat. They're I, creepy yeah, as fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're gremlins. Yeah. They're gremlins. They're gross. They're awesome. And then, of course, in two, you know, Rick Baker does all the effects for that and then like, they blows it totally out of the water. Well, I think there's a lot more charm to Chris Wallace's creations I, for I would the first ag- movie. I totally agree. It's just yeah. two, there's so many different designs, which yeah. is maybe part of the challenge they gave themselves. Oh, yeah. So well, Rick Baker, you know, in that sense, is what, I'm, what I'm saying, he knocks it out of the park. He's like, there's just so many different oh, fucking types of gremlins in that movie. It's incredible. Yeah, and yeah. like- I, The spider one. And again, like that's worth talking about alone, like sure. f- with that. Oh. So we'll get to that eventually. Okay, okay. We'll get to two eventually. If you don't know, you should know, but like uh, Howie Mandel provides the voice for Gizmo. <laughs> I had no idea. You didn't know that? No. You didn't know Howie Mandel did no, the voice for Gizmo? It, now it kind of clicks, but yeah, no, I did not know that. Now I'm picturing Bobby from Bobby's World, and it lines up it's perfectly. It's almost exactly the same. Uh, how did I miss that one? <laughs> okay, that line, uh, yeah. And then, we, of course, we have uh, MDU alumni Frank Welker coming back. Welcome back, Frank, to the show as Stripe. I knew that one. I yeah. knew Frank. You yeah. can't miss that voice. And, but there's also other, We. this is the lineup of voice actors we got cooking okay. here. All of the additional Gremlins voices. So Frank specifically voices Stripe. Okay. Okay. And Howie specifically voices Gizmo. Huh. We have Michael Winslow, Peter Cullen, Bob Bergen, Fred Newman, Mark Dodson, and Bob Holt. I didn't know Peter Cullen was on here. That's crazy. The voice of fucking Optimus Prime himself yeah. is doing Gremlins voices in this. Okay. Yeah. Is is he in the uh, Snow White scene? Or I have no the idea. The one in the blender. Hi ho, hi ho. Uh, yeah, oh I don't God. know. Uh, I guess it kind of makes sense that these <laughs> big names would be in the movie, even if they uh, are just doing Gremlins voices. But I didn't even think to look that up. Speaking of which, this is like a B movie on an A movie budget, like yeah, straight on some up. level. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Again, this is when this is a time when we could have these original ideas and like get a bunch of money pumped into them. Which at the time, you know, I think this movie was made for eleven million, which is a lot of money. But like at the time, you think about all those puppets, though, it doesn't seem like a lot. 
I couldn't see if a, an indie company giving anybody $11 million now to make Gremlins. Again, there's an entire bar full of Gremlins. There's yeah. an entire movie theater full of, like, literally <laughs> full. We're not talking like four of these things, like fucking there 50 of them. There are puppeteers yeah. under every one of these things. Like, so $11 million spent uh, well, plus yeah. whatever they paid the actors 100%. and the set designers. But yeah, yeah. wow. So, uh, with that being said... Uh, yeah, I guess let's get into this, man. Hey, you want to give us a little plot crunch of uh, Gremlins? For sure, us? sure. Uh, so uh, Rand Peltzer, he makes uh, the illogical logical. He's a inventor in Kingston yeah. Falls, um, and he's looking for the perfect Christmas present for his son Billy. He comes. He he's in New York City on I guess on a uh, a convention. I guess he's at uh, Comic Con or something, <laughs> peddling his. Uh, Inventions, his toothbrushes. He has tooth. The, the bathroom buddy, and he comes upon this shop in Chinatown in which he buys this strange creature from this old Chinese man. Buys is a uh, <laughs> strong word. Is, there. is a very loose term yeah. I'm going to use. There you go. uh, but he purchases. He he gets it for his son, and he gives it to his son. And it is this ancient Chinese creature who multiplies with water. And there are these very strict rules that you need to follow, um, or else all hell will break loose. Uh, starting with this f- cute little furry uh, animal, and it does. Yes. Kingston Falls goes to shit, and it's up to Billy and Kate and Gizmo to stop the barrage of gremlins during TM. the week of Christmas or something. I forget. Christmas they, Eve. Uh, it is Christmas Eve. I can't remember if they explicitly Eve. said that. Yeah. So, like Joe said, we do kick it off with this scene in Chinatown yeah. with uh, Mr. Peltzer. Uh, Hoyt Axton, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Uh, walking around, kind of just trying to find something. And he stumbles across this little uh, shop. This uh, shop, out of out of many horror movies and pulp uh, novels, uh, it feels like something we've seen a million times, but he gets, it fits. He gets pulled off the street. Right, while well, this this little guy, yeah. the grandson of yeah. the owner, he's like, hey, hey, you want something? We got some good shit here. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he brings like, no him wonder, in. Well, no wonder you got to pull people in off the street. I didn't even know there was a store. Right. Well, he walks in and it's like out of Rumpelstiltskin. Or again, some classic like uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. It's just this dirty, dank shop that just oh. got interesting shit all over the place. Famously parodied, parodied on The Simpsons. With, yeah, well, the, with yeah. the crusty doll. Yeah. That, that's a classic. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Oh. But I love the way the shop looks because I'm, I'm kind of poking a little fun at how stereotypical it is. But yeah. that is the fucking point. Yeah. And it has the lighting coming in. It just, man, you that, use the word cozy a lot and maybe cozy is the wrong word because this place is supposed to be a little ominous but it oh no. feels cozy it's cozy you even know? the streets of Chinatown feel cozy with the lights mm. and the fog and the I don't know it all feels really good part of that is that it's a set but I can't disagree no I know yeah, but it yeah. adds to the dreaminess and surrealness of the movie the atmosphere yeah, yeah the atmosphere yeah. overall and uh, Mr. Peltzer, he hears something. He's trying to sell this bathroom buddy at first. <laughs> you got he can't the bathroom help buddy. You got the toothpick. You got the toenail clippers. You got the toothbrush. He hasn't. He hasn't got this toothpaste figured out yet because he immediately sprays himself with toothpaste. <laughs> I don't, don't worry about that. We're still figuring out the kinks. You know, because he's a salesman. He knows what he's doing. He's trying to get like the old the old Chinese guy to like buy the bathroom buddy, and he's like, I can get you these by the dozen, and he's like, Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> he could care less. Yeah. But Mr. Peltzer, he hears this little, like, cooing sound. He's like, what the hell is that? And he walks over, and you start to hear the the singing. Yes. Gizmo's which, song. Which is funny, because I also read this today, which I didn't mm. know. It's not Howie Mandel singing. It's mm. a little girl that does the lullaby. Ah, Gizmo's okay. little song. Yeah, the humming. A little less creepy than knowing Howie Mandel was... Mm, Uh, nothing against Howie, really. Just that's the visual in my brain. Yeah. But yeah, he picks up this box that Gizmo's in, this little like uh, wicker box, mm-hmm. and he shows the old man. Oh, I want this. This is cute. I, this is my son will love this. He's going, he throws out. He ends up throwing out like two hundred bucks. Yeah. And Makwai is not for sale, dude. <laughs> I love how the old man's like, I'm not. I'm not selling that. And it the comes grand- with much responsibility, Sean. Right. Right. But the grandson's like. That's 200 bucks, oh, yeah. old man. <laughs> like, fuck, we're, we're going to get evicted. Yeah. Uh, meet me out, out back, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Mr. Peltzer just, even though he knows, yeah, this is probably kind of fucked up, just does it. Peltzer doesn't give a shit. Yeah, he's, he like, here's, he's like, here's the money. You got the thing. Okay, so he takes Gizmo home. And this is when the kid gives the 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 information you're going to need for and this He's pet. like, look, mister. There's some things you got to know about the Mogwai. Should have wrote it down, but whatever. Uh, by the way, like, Rand Pelts are taking this creature that nobody's ever seen before, Literally ever. No one. Steve Irwin would have been creaming his <laughs> pants over this. <laughs> Look at this little dang, uh, dang, doogly guy. 
and he's cooing and he's singing and he's doing all this great stuff. Watch what happens when I put water on him. Oh, God, now I wish we had that. That's oh, got If that's not a Mad TV or a robot chicken sketch, <laughs> it needs to be. Steve Irwin finding a, a, mogwai. a, a mogwai in the yeah. Chinese wilderness. And getting killed by a gremlin, I Maybe suppose. Maybe could where be. That goes. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, he starts yeah. he starts getting these rules from yeah. this kid. Very important stuff. Yeah. Keep he hates bright lights. Right. Okay. So you got to keep him out of sunlight. It'll kill him. Right. Very important rule. Very important rule. Uh, don't get him wet. Mm-hmm. Okay. No baths. No baths. No water to drink. None of that. No Can't beer. Oh wait, uh, they can have beer apparently. Oh, they can have beer. Don't, don't not, think about that too and much. And not multiply. But I guess it's mo- yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ixnay on the beer. Right. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> And what's the most important rule of all? Do not feed them after midnight hour. Midnight hour? TM? <laughs> That's the bad joke. And Rand Peltzer's just like, yeah, okay, whatever you say, kid. Bye. Like, right. not, not like... Doesn't mean, question it. Like, like, you mean this animal will die if sunlight hits it? Why Why can't I get him wet? What's going to happen? Well, because Joe Dante knew for the next, like, 40 fucking years, everyone that watched this movie is going to sit here and debate these three rules to their fucking f- skin turns red. Because I, I don't even really want to do that. <laughs> I'm not. There's the, the rules don't make sense. Just get that out there. They oh, don't they make, make any sense. They make perfect sense. The water one makes sense, but the food one just... I'm just gonna say, don't overthink that one. Just go, just go with it. They're just, fucking just yokai. What are you talking about? I, that's kind of the logic, right? They're yeah. kind of like yokai. Yeah, yeah, straight up. And it's one of those things where it's like, those are just the rules because yeah. that's the rules. Yeah, don't, don't. Those are the rules. Yeah. Don't try to pick it apart. And they do in the second one, and they poke fun at it. They and do. Stuff. They yeah. do, which I do actually appreciate. Yeah. But you know, again, for 40 years, people have been having these fucking sure. debates, <laughs> all because Mr. Peltzer couldn't ask some damn questions. Look, I'm fine with it. I don't care. Me too. I just and that's. But you got to understand out there you gotta understand that's part of the commentary of the movie no it is where, yeah. where he's like yeah whatever i don't give a shit uh i'm he just gonna abuse a, this exactly 100 yeah. that that is the larger point yeah. uh but i just know there are people like what the rules you guys gotta comment on the rules yeah that's our comment <laughs> don't overthink it don't overthink it it works it's for a the film it's a mystical creature yes. and, yeah and, and when it's thing, encrypted for all intents and purposes uh, yeah when things happen because the rules are broken you're just like oh okay the next part of the movie yeah not oh well, that doesn't make sense if they're in los angeles actually <laughs> But anyway, so he brings this thing home. <laughs> so that's the whole cold open that we get. Right. We get the lore about the creature and the whole thing, and it's this it's this mystical Chinese creature. Don't tell my grandpa. And then, it, yeah, don't tell grandpa the Mogwai's gone. Um, and then this is one of my favorite intros to a movie of all time because from there it goes black, and then we kick up Darlene Love, man. Christmas, oh, yeah. and the snow comes down, and as it's playing... Rock and Ricky Rialto is comes on and like it I love the through line with this because we have all these char- these periphery characters of the town yeah. kind of happening throughout the whole movie. We get a billboard for that guy. Yeah. Even. And Rocky and he it's like a spoof on uh, Indiana Jones. Mhm. Mhm. You're rolling with Rock and Ricky Rialto, dude. Yes. Uh... Um that's just something I say a lot and it's <laughs> Because it's like one of my favorite parts, and then just like you know, Darling Love kicks up, and the fucking Gremlins logo pops up, and it's this great montage of all the kids like getting out for like winter break yes. and stuff. It's just really cool. Throwing snowballs, it sets the whole tone for Kingston Falls as like this postcard esque type. Uh, oh yeah, community. yeah. Especially yeah. when you have that cold open where it's yeah. just like yeah. Don't fuck this up because things will go bad. And then, you know, this like euphoric kind of Christmas location. Yeah, this perfect, this perfect town kind right. of thing. Uh, yeah. I, I do Small also, town USA. Exactly. I do also like the through line uh, that you alluded to with the uh, radio jockey that we kind of get yeah. throughout this. So we have, we've had that in a few. I think the Beyond was one. Or not the Beyond. Uh, what's that one? The, the the Being. The Being was the one we always go back to. That's the one that we always joke about, the the, the weather and everything. The being has yeah. one. The midnight hour has one. Yeah, like yeah, literal yeah. Wolfman Jack and that one. Um, but uh, it, no Pontypool where it's the whole movie. No. But I like that element in horror films where they have the radio guy kind of there for the ride, and you never see him. No, you just you hear him a bunch. You of times. hear him a bunch of times, and it's just so good. Yeah, like yeah. how they incorporate him into the movie because he's literally like the local DJ yep. dealing with the problem that everybody else is, exactly. which is great. But then we uh, get introduced to Billy. We get introduced to Billy. We see all the, some periphery characters. Mm-hmm. We see, um, you know, the sheriff and some other guys. We see Corey Feldman a little right, bit. Yeah. yeah, the neighbor, the neighbor Pete. Yeah, we see uh, Zach Galligan as Billy, 
and his dog Barney. His dog Barney, and he's basically late for work because his car won't start. And we're introduced to Dick Miller as Mr. Futterman. Yes, goddamn foreign cars. Uh, yeah, immediately coming out, <laughs> just being your stereotypical. I hate everything ex- unless it's American. Yeah. And he's like a drunk bastard in the you beginning here. See that over there? It's a Kentucky Harvester. A Kentucky Harvester. He's in love with his fucking <laughs> tractor. Or whatever you know, you don't see American is. vehicles breaking down like that. Uh, foreign dr- piece of shit drives this effing tractor yeah. around the whole town. It's his only. Ve- Again, he's a drunk all the time, so maybe it's for the better. Oh, he's a World War II veteran. Right. That's the whole thing. Well, he's got PTSD. That's how we tie it back to like the gremlins and like if you don't know what we're talking about or have no context for gremlins. Right. Uh, there was like a famous Bugs Bunny cartoon that dealt with gremlins and taking down planes in World War mm-hmm. II, and even that Roald Dahl um, story and all kinds of. There's like there's like literal sto- literal stories uh, about World War II about gremlins like fucking up. Uh, our uh, planes and electronics and all kinds right. of stuff. That that's where the idea of a yeah. gremlin originates. Yeah. And again, like like we already said, the, the 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 gremlins in this film are literally the physical embodiment of what a gremlin is. That Mr. Yeah. Futterman is talking about. There are you, and there's been other things like you just said. Like there's episodes of Goosebumps yeah. about this and stuff. The like gremlin that. and the camera say cheese yep. and die. Exactly. Um, also, like you think the Mogwai are cousins of the the uh, gremlin on the wing of the plane that like John Lithgow <laughs> sees in the Twilight Zone movie. <laughs> I mean, they are gremlins, yeah. so... He's a, he's a fucking gremlin. Uh, that one's from the Underdark, I think, the one in the fucking Twilight Zone movie. That, that's a scary f- motherfucker. We'll get to his uh, ass. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, like you said, Billy's late for work, and he's got to hoof it because his fucking car won't start which is in another... this snowstorm. Yeah, which is another great thing because you see more of the town because yes. he has to walk there. Um... Also, the same town from Back to the Future, uh, it's impossible not to notice it if you've seen both films because, like, that opening shot of, like, Gremlins and when Marty's going through yeah. the town, it's, like, the exact same location. <laughs> kind of just a funny just movie trivia thing. Meant to mention that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he starts going into town. He works at the bank with his 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 girlfriend by the end of the film. But first, they just kind of have some sexual tension. Well, 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 yeah, not his girlfriend, but they they get together. They're smitten. You yeah, know what I yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. But just to your point, yeah, Twin Pines is right next to uh, Kingston Falls. Yeah, well, in the yeah, MDU, yeah, actually, the MDU, he's but, right there. But the actual film was, yeah, that part was filmed there. There's a reality where Marty McFly fights gremlins. <laughs> You know, yeah, a few years before that, <laughs> he was still in middle school. Um, Maybe he's Corey Feldman. Oh, he's actually Feldman. Yeah. He get, when he gets older, he he, he turns into dis- Michael J. Fox. Yeah, right. He starts to disappear with that picture. <laughs> Uh, and then he moves to California. He goes to Camp Crystal Lake, yeah. Right. Well, there's that, and then he goes to California, Lost Boy. We got to do a Corey Feldman well, breakdown yeah. one day. Maybe we'll do uh, that fifth uh, Friday movie one day. Fourth. Fourth, right. Wow. Well, Final chapter, baby. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Five, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so we we go to the bank where we we meet uh, Phoebe Cates. Mm-hmm. God, I love Phoebe Cates. Uh, man. She's great. She is like one of my biggest childhood crushes. Oh well, she was uh, for lack of a better term, like kind of a sex symbol at the time. I feel like Fast she Times w- at Ridgemont High, baby. I mean, there's that topless scene. They um originally didn't want to cast her because of that. Really? Yeah, because she was she was doing that like, was so risque famous. roles. No, she was doing risque roles, and in this movie, she's very reserved. Oh, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, sweetheart, girl next door type. I mean, that's one of the especially I would imagine at the time when it came out, right before this, yeah. was like one of the most famous topless scenes in a movie. Oh, ever. big dude, yeah, of course, yeah, totally. Uh, but she's really good in this. She works at the bank also. But another caveat to the scene that's important for later, is, well, there's two things. One, Billy brings his fucking dog with him to work, which yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> but also this pain in the ass woman. Who who owns the bank in a lot of the town? Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Deagle. Deagle, comes Deagle, in. Deagle, Deagle, Deagle. Yeah. Uh, everyone hates this woman, but no one could tell her like to stop doing what she's doing because she owns everything. Yeah, she will kick you out of your yeah. fucking house. She will evict. She's a real prune. It's a real prune situation. <laughs> she is like prune for Christmas. That almost was Yeah, it. it's a prune situation. Uh, she might be uh, related to prune. But... Oh, she was definitely like married to him at one point. You think? <laughs> yeah, he even was sick of her shit. Yeah, right. Yeah, go back to f- get the fuck out of here, Miss <laughs> Deagle. Go bother Billy. Just real quick. Uh, just to just to, to solidify her her putridness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Belinda uh, Belaski's outside, and she's from the Howling. Oh, okay. Uh, she yeah, she gets. It, oh, but this woman. She with gets the it, kids. She gets killed by Eddie Quist in the in the Howling, <laughs> and like recorded. Okay, so this is before that. This is when she was like needing money to, to yeah. put turn her heat on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is before she became a journalist, and yeah, and 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 like left the kids with the husband right, and had a got a new boom. boyfriend. Yeah. But it's basically Mrs. Deagle like denying her uh, 
an extension on the rent because they like right. can't afford it. They can't even eat. And Ms. Deagle's like, fuck you. I'm going to throw you in the street. You know just what to ask Santa for, don't you? And also, like, throw him in the street. Good shit, Joe. It, 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 a lot, a lot of the, the 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 dialogue is very well chosen in this film, so you could have a callback later that's funny as shit. Pretty great. Uh, but you're right; that is important because that woman actually comes up a couple times, and just to keep reminding she's, you that man, this is fucked, right? She's one of the she's one of the big antagonists of the film. Well, right, but I'm yeah. talking about that 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 woman who's basically going to be kicked out on her ass. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She keeps popping up a few times in yeah. the film to just kind of send home that point. That remember, Mrs. Deagle? Here's yeah. that woman who needs money again, yeah. in case you forgot. And and the bank's not giving her an inch. No. But Mrs. Deagle comes up and she's immediately harassing Billy. And this is what's left of my Pav- imported Bavarian snowman. Oh, yeah. Your dog broke it this morning. Dog broke it. You got the fucking head. <laughs> Meanwhile, the dog's literally right there and hates her too because this dog doesn't give two shits. She like always cuts everybody in line and she's a real asshole. It's so funny. But the dog, I guess, just, you know, Barney, you know, he didn't like her uh, talking about him yeah. so negatively. Yeah. Jumps up from under the counter. Oh, yeah. Well, she's like, I'll catch the beast myself and put him in a spin dryer on oh. high heat. Yeah, I'm gonna kill your dog. Kill okay, your lady. fucking dog. Like, just like, completely like threatening this kid in front of like uh, all these people. Over this porcelain snowman. Yeah. And then the dog kind of jumps up. Doesn't even really attack her, but kind of just like pushes on her and she well, like falls over. It's like, ah! It's like, it, 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 <laughs> the snowman breaks completely, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. which is great. And Barney's like tugging at her arm and stuff. Just the fucking head at that point. Yeah. Like, I guess it's the principal and she's trying to like, you know, cause a scene. Oh, I'm gonna kill that dog! Yeah, yeah. Get this dog out! <laughs> And we get uh, Judge Reinhold, dude. Oh, I always forget he's in this movie. He's like the most annoying character. He plays Gerald and also welcome Judge Reinhold to the MDU. He's got to already be in here somewhere, so. right? I don't he's think in the soup. I don't think Judge is in here yet, man. Oh, I mean, man. He, he's he's a big part of our lives with like Beverly Hills Cop and sure. stuff like that, like outside of the yeah, MDU. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, welcome Judd. Yeah. Uh, one hell of a character to Judge. come. Judge, excuse me. Uh, Love the guy, but man, he is annoying in this movie. He's I, at first you think he's kind of friends with Billy, but then he's just like trying to tell him what to do with his bar after work. Like, yeah, Billy, you know why you got to be such an asshole? Like, just do what I do. And it's like, what? I didn't ask for any unsolicited advice, my judge. But okay. Well, because Billy, Billy's working at the bank, but he wants to be an artist. He wants to be a comic book artist. He's oh he's, yeah yeah. Um, so he's an illustrator and what's funny about the, when they get to Dory's Tavern, by the way, um, Oh, is that the name? Okay. Dory's Tavern. Yeah. Um, when he's drawing, when we first get introduced to him at the bar, that's Chuck Jones sitting next to him. He's that's like, a hell of a cameo. Yeah. Wow. He's, like, he's like, he's like, the old bat never looked better. You're doing fine. That's wow. Chuck Jones. I love that. I didn't yeah, even know that. Yeah, that's which great. Is crazy. And there's just like, there's some good banter here and it's like, Basically, like you're a fucking like judge is telling him you're a loser. You're 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 basically supporting your your family yourself. Uh, you want to be an artist. Your career's going nowhere. I'm gonna have the bank manager's job when I'm by the time I'm thirty, and then I'll be a millionaire. Which okay, fine, judge. Like that that that's all well and good. I'm glad that's your goal. But like, why you gotta like? I can't tell like what his point is here. Like, are you actually just like trying to give advice, or are you just like let me punch you while you're down, Billy? <laughs> yeah, straight up. Because then he tries to hit on uh, Phoebe Cates, yeah. and she's like. Like he's like, hey, you want to you want to see my new apartment? She's like, I didn't see your old apartment. <laughs> yeah, which is great. That's a great. Uh, there's also like that implication there, and it's kind of apparent as you continue to watch the film that Dad, yeah, he's trying to be an inventor, but he sucks at it, and it's not bringing in any money. Well, they got to be doing moderately successful because I like guess, right? he has sold a few inventions. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I was kind of getting mixed messages on that, and again, seen it a hundred times, but like actually sitting there thinking about it. I think it's I think it's they're waiting for the next big one. Because it seems like they sold a couple and like the money is running out sure. from them. Because I'm just like the way this is presented, almost like a Wayne Zelensky kind of situation, I guess, which is kind of proves your point. Where like Zelensky, he had like he had the shrink ray, but everything else he made was like just a nuisance. It didn't work like it was supposed to. Like they have this this fucking orange squisher, yeah, and the phone that has like works with a remote control. None of this shit works. <laughs> the Belzer Peeler juicer yeah. is so good. Uh, which you know it was the the third Honey I Shrunk the Kids movie, but I think of the the, the peanut butter maker or whatever that that oh, Wayne's yeah, got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just well, like good ideas, but the ex- Execution ain't there, so I just assumed when Judge Reinhold's saying all that shit to Billy, it's like, yeah, you're you're supporting your family because your dad's a loser, but maybe I'm overthinking. Mrs. Deagle even says it to 
Yeah. Really. She's yeah. like, she's like, I'm tired of your excuses. I listened to your father's excuses for years. The loser. Like he's late on his payments or something. Yeah. yeah. There's something there, but you're right. I guess if they do still have their home and the lights are on, he must be have some moderate yeah. success. But that okay. ashtray in that bathroom, buddy, he ain't doing oh, it. Oh, no, no, man. <laughs> he's trying to make it work like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to say that the casting in this movie oh, is perfect. incredible. And everybody's great at, act, you know, excellent acting in it, but like- Rand Pelter and Billy and his mother, they all look like a family. Oh, yeah. Like, I totally believe that they got married and had Zach Galligan. Same. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, then we kind of do get this first, like, family scene mm-hmm. uh, where they're at home and, you know. I love it because, like, he comes in and, like, the, so <laughs> the, the it, sword always falls yeah, off the yeah, wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever you walk into the Pelter residence, the sword, the, they have, these like, these two swords and, like, this crest on the wall and, like, the sword falls off, which is great foreshadowing. There's lots of setups and payoffs in this yeah, movie. that's what I'm saying. And they work so well. Joe, Joe kind of figured the art of that out in this film. Yeah, 100%. Uh, but yeah, Mr. Peltzer finally comes in. I think there's actually a scene before Billy comes in and the sword falls just to kind of set up the running gag. Yeah. But uh, he comes in with the mogwai and he's like, God, oh, turn the lights off. Come on, come on, everyone, come in. And we kind of get the soft uh, Gremlins theme going as yeah. we lead into Gizmo singing. It's as, as he presents himself to Billy. And he's yeah. like, God, oh, there's your Christmas present. He like, Billy? jumps out of the box. Yeah. I, this is such the a great product, man, and the puppeteering. I, I, just, the, I love this scene too. And again, like I can't stress enough, like the way that this movie shot is yeah. so uh, fun, and like it has sells this, the whole ha- movie has this very like great fantasy yeah. feel running through it. Like, I mean, I know it's a fantasy movie. No, but I know like, what you mean though. It, it and for lack of a better term, it has this kind of surrealistic feel to it, like. When the camera pushes in and it pushes out, there's lots of Dutch angles in this movie, oh, yeah. um, and a lot of a lot of the lighting choices are very dramatic and and moody, mm-hmm. and I and I really appreciate that. But yeah, Gizmo jumps out of the box and he like takes him out. And he's like, oh my god! He's like, what is this? And he's like, uh, it's a Mogwai. And nobody in the room's like, where the fuck did you get this thing? <laughs> like, what? I've never what? seen this. It's a monster. It's is, a creature. Is this like a ferret or something? No, it's a Mogwai. <laughs> it's a cryptid. Like. Nobody raises an eyebrow. They're just like, cool. I yeah, love it. At the most, Billy's like, huh, weird little fella. Yeah. What do you call it? I call him Gizmo. He seems to like it. It, it okay. talks and sings and expresses and, you know. And it's not Brian from Family Guy. No. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you're right. They don't over. They don't ask any questions, yeah. which, again, caused people for the, the rest of time yeah. after it came out to ask all the questions. But uh, mom doesn't know all the rules because oh dad's taking his sweet fucking time to let the rules oh, out. Oh, yeah, seriously. She takes a picture of them and like this flash goes off and uh, Gizmo has a heart attack <laughs> and flies into Rand's arms. And he's like, oh, I, there's some stuff I forgot to tell you. Uh, the most important things. Uh, no bright lights. Right. Sunlight will kill him. Uh, don't get him wet. Don't give him a bath. Don't give him anything to drink. And don't feed him after midnight. I don't know what happens, but don't do it, yeah, okay? Just don't do it. Uh, and, I, and again, I just kind of said it, but the expressiveness of Gizmo really just sells yeah. the whole thing because he's like, you know, he's hiding, he's shivering in, yeah, in yeah. fear in Mr. Peltzer's arms and he's got those big uh, eyes and everything. It's just, it's kind of cute. Yeah, they had a lot of problems with the smaller creature really? effects. Yeah, like because Gizmo is so small and... Because I know there's they made a lot on of, some shots he was actually way bigger. Yeah, there's a lot of mechanics in the Gizmo animatronic. So, and because it was so small, it would break a lot. Wow. But the blend of the small puppet moving and then like the shots where like Billy will be holding it and when he puts it down, he like hands it off frame and then that puppet mm. is already there. And then also, uh, like like you said, like the there's an large puppets to do the more expressive shots and all stuff like that. It's, so it's it's like a really it's literal hashtag movie magic. I, like, I was gonna say it's like a master class on how to do it. Yeah, and there's all kinds of shit in this movie. There's little animatronics. There's the practical effects. There's puppets. There's hand puppets. There's rod puppets. There's stop motion. Um, it's really excellent. Just about every technique you could think of, yeah. they utilize in this film. Force perspective, and, and, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So everything's kind of like going okay for a little while. Like they're starting to get to know each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, Billy's falling in love with Gizmo. Gizmo's falling in love with him. The <sighs> dog's even kind of getting yeah. in on the action. I, I love Billy's bedroom. I Whoa. always wanted the attic bedroom. And he has it just like, just like uh, uh, Eddie Weinbauer oh, from yeah, Trick yeah. or Treat. You know, I always wanted that attic bedroom with like sure. the posters on the walls and the wood the exposed wood and stuff I, I love his setup too he's got the dog he's like 
cradle and in bed, but he's yeah. also Gizmo has his own little bed little chair. And, yeah, yeah, it's cute. And uh, again, they're just kind of playing together, getting to know each other. Gizmo kind of even bunks his head at one point, and he wraps like the bandage around his head. Oh, he's like playing the the, the piano. His lullaby on yeah. the piano. Yeah. Oh, and he's humming to it. It's yeah. it's really charming, it's and you're cute. just you're waiting for that other shoe to drop, but yeah. you, you don't want it to drop because yeah. you're really enjoying what's happening. Yeah. But it's, you know, shit has to hit the fan eventually. Yeah, because he's like bonding with this little creature. Then he has his buddy Corey Feldman show up. Corey Feldman. Who works at the tree uh, place with his dad. <laughs> with the tree costume he comes in. He's dressed in a tree costume to deliver Christmas trees. Which I always forget. Again, seen it a hundred times. I know Corey Feldman's fucking in this movie, but every time that first time they go to the Christmas tree place, yeah. and he's in the full outfit. Yeah, you near Pete. Yeah, he starts the trees talking. I always forget that's Corey yeah, Feldman yeah. until he comes over later. And I'm like, oh yeah, duh. <laughs> I uh, love when he comes in and he's like, he's like, Pelter, your tree. Your tree. Ah, Christ. And then he starts ripping off the costume. <laughs> and again, Corey Feldman, if no one in, in the Peltzer family shocked, okay, fine, whatever. But even Corey Feldman's like, what is that thing? He's like, what is this called? What? Where did you get this thing from? Cool. He's yeah. like, got the feet kicked up. He's already all about it. It's like, all right, let's, Joe, Joe Dante probably was just like, if we spend most of the movie of people just going, what the fuck is that? <laughs> we'll never get anywhere. I feel like they were just like, let's just pretend like people don't overthink it and also, move on. Also, we're getting right to, we're breaking those rules like nobody's business. Yeah, so, I like, guess the, before we do get into that, just the only other thing a note is that Mr. Peltzer, two days before Christmas, has to go on this trip because there's a convention. There's up. a convention. Well, he's trying to sell his... Bathroom buddy, man. Right, right. That's so, going to make the ends meet for the Peltzer clan. Exactly, which I, I only mention that here because it's important going forward because he's not there to enforce any of these rules and Mom sure as fuck ain't. Like he gives a shit. I know, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's like, he's like I don't know. Get out of here yeah. with that. I don't give a don't damn. Don't get a wet, don't feed. I, I got to go to New York. I I'll see know. you later. It's I'll bring the dog with me. I don't know. I found it in Chinatown, whatever. He brings the dog also. Just want to note that well, so he, Mrs. Deagle can't get yeah, his he brings ass. Barney. He brings Barney so, um, you know, yeah. Mr. Deagle can't get him. But yeah, you're right. Let's go back to Corey Feldman and his well, fucking cup of water. Well, also just want to note, like, I'm sorry, there's a lot in this movie that yeah, there's, there's yeah. these little things, but they're they're so great. And like I love how uh Rand makes all these inventions and none of them work. That's what I'm saying earlier. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. And like the Peltzer Peeler juicer is one of my favorite <laughs> scenes when he when Billy's trying to make the fucking orange juice. All over. And it explodes all over the place. It's great. That might be when he talks to Corey Feldman on the phone, or he talks to or maybe no, somebody he comes, in, he comes into the kitchen. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah, he's like, ah, didn't your dad fix this thing? He's like, I thought he did. He's like, he's like why don't you just buy your orange juice and cartons like the rest of us? Uh, yeah. Anyway, let me that, see this mogwa. Yeah, this mogwa. I think I saw that in a history book. Really? <laughs> no, but I'm not, not shocked really. by it. So Corey goes to pick it up, pick up Gizmo, and he knocks over like Billy's paints and spills water all over Gizmo. And he's like, oh my God, he's like, what was in that jar? He's like, just water. Gizmo starts freaking out, and it's this, uh, the, his back starts bubbling yep. and smoking, and all of a sudden, these fur balls start popping out of his back. And Gizmo knows instantly, oh, like, yeah. oh, we're in trouble. He's like, oh no, what did you do? Well, his face for the next 10 minutes before shit really starts popping off is just like, Ooh. oh, he's got his cute little sad face. Yeah. And Billy's like, Gizmo, is everything okay? And he's like, not really. Yeah. So, oh, man, this is so good because when the Mogwai come out, there's these great effects of like these balloons like inflating, like the like the fur balls are getting bigger and growing. And then like this gross, like the ears are over their eyes and it like opens and they're mm. all like uh, slimy kind of. And then we have the five... The, the the bad clan, the five bad Mogwai with the leader, of course, is Stripe. Stripe, uh, of course, the most, besides Gizmo, the most iconic character. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some of those gremlins, they give like the kind of crazy eyes and the different skin tones to mix them up. But well, generally speaking, they look the same. Well, in the first one, they all are the same yeah, gremlin. Yeah. With the exception of Stripe with the stripe on his head. So am I just misremembering that just from watching both these films so many times? There's none with the crazy eyes in the first one? No. Okay, okay. So the second movie There gives... definitely is in the second one. So so the f the first five Mogwai in the first movie are all the same. Okay, with the exception okay. of Stripe with his mohawk. All right, well. In the second movie, there's, uh, what is it? Uh, George, Lenny, Daffy... Daffy. Mohawk. That's what I'm thinking of, Daffy. And there's four main ones in the second one, and they have all of their individual personalities and color schemes and kind of uh, uh, sculpts. Okay. Right? Okay. 
And then when they go through metamorphosis, they all look very specific. And then you have your standard brown and green gremlins, with the exception of uh, the, the Gre- ones. Greta Gremlin yeah. and like all that kind of shit. Okay, I wasn't sure if I was getting that mixed up in my head. That's why, even though I just watched this, just, yeah. that's why I brought that up. But yeah. they're all yeah. the same. Okay, okay. So Stripe, you know, instantly keeps the cost down too. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. But you know, again, Gizmo's looking at this like he knows shit's like about to hit the fan any second. But Stripe, just the second he opens those eyes and can start walking around, just the machine. Is just oozing off of him. He he's goes squinting constantly. He goes to bite Corey Feldman. Yeah. Right, right off the bat. Yeah, and he's like, Can I have one of these? And he's like, Yeah, sure. And he's like, No, I'm good. <laughs> Corey yeah. Feldman's like, Yeah, cool. Uh, you can keep him. But you, you know, instantly, like like Joe kind of either said or implied, you know, Stripe kind of takes over as the leader of the pack. And it's just kind of uh, you know, pushing the envelope, making shit like a little meaner every time something happens. And They're, it, like, tormenting Gizmo. Yeah. They're, like, spitting at him. Like, spi- I don't know. Like, stri- at one point, Stripe, like, spits caramel or, like, spits chewing tobacco at him. Uh, yeah, like a big glob uh, of it. I love how L- Billy tells Dad. He's like, he's like, something happened with the Mogwai. It got wet. And he's yeah. like, it multiplied. And he's like, what? He goes downstairs. He sees all the, gr- the Mogwai. And he's like, huh. You know? We can make a buck off this. How about, how about the Peltzer pet? What do you say, kiddo? Right. Everybody, every kid in America is going to want one of these. I forgot. He doesn't leave until after the first thing. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't see the second transformation. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Dad's but, thinking he, see, he sees green in his eyes. Oh, yeah. He sees but, dollar signs. Yeah, but like that night, like they the the Mogwai like hang up Barney outside by like some Christmas lights. Right. And they yeah, think it's yeah. Mrs. Deagle, and that's why Dad takes Barney with him. That's what it is. Yeah. You're right. Drops him off at Grandma's. <laughs> Yeah. In Twin Pines. Exactly. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right. But then we go to like the next day or a couple days later, and uh, now now they've uh, gone to the school where uh, Corey Feldman goes, and they're talking to the science teacher. Yeah, he brings him a mogwai to like test, and he's like, he's like, I'm going to run some blood tests on this thing. I'm like, dude, you're like, you're a high school science teacher. Like, <laughs> well, first they show how it works with like a, uh, a an dripper, eyedropper. Yeah. Eyedropper, yeah, just to, sh- to create one more clone. Yeah. So Even though Gizmo's already expressed how bad of an idea this is. So at this current, besides Gizmo, there's six mogwai. Now, right, yeah. Right now. We jumped to the bar that night. And Mr. Futterman's at the bar and like Kate's closing up and stuff. And this is kind of where we oh, get. Oh, yeah, because she works there, right? Yeah, yeah, she's like doing shifts at Dory's. Um, and she's getting a. Uh, 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 Mr. Futterman's there. And like, this is where we kind of get some more backstory, like what could, wh- what these things might be. Because Mr. Futterman's like, yeah, the gremlins, they took down our planes and the big one, WWYI. And he's like, they put the gremlins in your radios and they got little gremlins for your watches and all this shit. They're like, yeah, yeah, whatever, dude. Like, get out of here. Right, yeah. But that payoff is so good later. No, sure, yeah. yeah but here he just sounds nuts because he won't shut up about yeah. it. So Billy walks Kate home, and this is the first we get of her, like, seasonal depression kind of thing. Yeah, she's like, well, she's uh, like, not everyone likes Christmas. Super morbid about it. And um, we don't really know why yet. Right, yeah. But uh, it's just the inkling of that. But then he asks her out on a date, so they go on a date. So I thought that was that's really cute. Yeah, that that is important for later. And Billy also, like, when she starts talking about that, he, like, can't even fathom it. What do you mean you don't like Christmas? What's wrong with that? Mm. And she's like, yeah, worry about it in an hour. <laughs> it was like, hour oh, run you, time, not an hour you, for you, Billy. You, know, you, say, you, say you, think, you say you hate Thanksgiving, nobody cares. You say you hate Christmas, and everybody treats you like a leper. Yeah, right, yeah. So yeah, like you were like you were saying about so the, there's a Mogwai at the high school and and Billy's home at night that night after he walks Kate home. Right, the one at the, the the science teacher or whatever is looking at who's got it like in a guinea pig cage. He's got it in like a hamster cage, he's like taking blood from him and stuff. And I'm like, where did that blood test go exactly? Again, yeah, this isn't a college campus where I could maybe understand there's there's a space for that, but at the middle school, I know, but or like maybe but like, the high school, but like this is a this is an unknown, this is of unknown origin to you, literally. You know what I mean? I, I, maybe that's the only guy in the town that they both like Corey Feldman and Billy know, the guy that works at the school. Like, the did teacher. he like did he send that blood out for like a lab test? You think and like never got the results back, or like did get the results and it just like faded in away because. Right, or the yeah. events of this film happen and everything's like honky dory, but then like the guy from Return of Living Dead gets that fucking call and then the nuke <laughs> comes in. Oh, dude. Takes the whole town out. We can't chance it. <laughs> no, that blood test just ends up in the you need a medical supply. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. 
So the Mogwai are freaking out because they're hungry. And Billy's like, what the fuck? He's like, I already fed you. Would you shut up already? He's like, fine, I'll get you something to eat. So he goes down and he gets some chicken. And by the way... <laughs> that was dinner for tomorrow. Yeah, right? It's like raw chicken, too. And he, uh, just by the way, on the fridge is the is a smiley face sticker, which is like a motif of Eddie Quist from The Howling. Oh. That's like how he like marks his wherever he like lives or is a part of. An Easter egg. What a novel idea. Pretty great. And you would only know that if you've seen the Joe Dante movie, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. But, um, but uh, they, the ones at Billy's house and the one that's at the school both got to eat simultaneously. That's, at least that's how it's presented where- Well, they eat after midnight. After midnight is key, but Billy thinks it's 11.13 or something mm -hmm. when he reads his clock. It's like 11.55. There's no way I'm chancing that. If one like of the a, rules yeah, is don't feed after midnight. It's like 11.13, but he doesn't know that because come to find out they bit the fucking wire, yeah. but how would you even know that? Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, the teacher just leaves half a sandwich sitting there and goes home. Not, doesn't throw it out or anything, but Maybe the Mogwai gets it. Saving it for later, man. Tomorrow we're going to yeah. eat a lukewarm sandwich that Bologna sat there overnight. Throw it in the fucking trash. <laughs> that's uh, for the janitor, dude. Yeah, well, that's what he thought. Yeah. Instead, the Mogwai eats it, and now they are covered in these fucking alien ass oh my God. Uh, shells or, or They're eggs. cocoons. Cocoons, yeah. The, they have... Transform. They're going through a metamorphosis now, right? And they look gnarly. Uh, we got one on the table right there. The fog's kicking up. The the water or the the stickiness rather. Oh man, is they are they are off these things. They are gooey. They are gross. And like at this point, I'd be like, these things need to go. I mean, Billy kind of doesn't even know what to say, but he's he's leaning in he's that like, direction. He's like, I guess they're the Mogwai, and I'm like, you guess they're the Mogwai. Like, <laughs> his mom's just like, what the hell is that, Billy? They transformed. I don't know. I don't know. I I'm late for school. Bye. Well, this is where he's like, yeah, I didn't feed him after midnight, and he looks at the clock, and it still says eleven thirteen, and he's like, wait a second, what's going on here? And he checks it yeah. and sees it's like the wires bitten, and it's still like maybe he's just in self like doubt. He doesn't want to believe it, like that they intend intended this to happen he's just like what the hell's happening mom he's trying to put it all together and it's like yeah. and it's like wait like are they that smart how could they cut the power that's man they're animals but that's literally yeah. what it is he doesn't realize that they intended this all to happen like he, why would you ever think that they would trick you but now it's like yeah exactly he's they're trying mischievous to put it together. little devils yeah, yeah because because gizmo is, is a facade you know what i mean like he's the only one where like he's he's He's, he's not going to, yeah, he's not going to eat after midnight. He's not going to do any of the gross stuff. He just wants to chill and like enjoy life. Right. Cause he even offers Gizmo in that scene, one of the chicken legs. And, and he's, he's like, like eh, eh. no, I don't want that. Doesn't say eh, it's after midnight, <laughs> but just, eh, eh. <laughs> just eh, eh. again, plot has to happen. Sure. But yeah, then these motherfuckers start hatching. Oh dude, they hatch. And it's a creepy ass scene too. Again, the score here mixed with like some really gross effects. Like they open and like. Fog is coming out and goo is coming off them and there's like this inverted like oh, sound yeah, yeah. and like the and again the the music it's just so good and they're hatching um in Billy's room and they're hatching At in the, the classroom as well. I love how this is shot too because again 2023 you probably if you're watching this episode you know what the fucking gremlins look like yeah. but if this is your first viewing uh, it's really just the, the reveal, the, the slow reveal. reveal. You're getting for, so far. You've got you've gotten sounds. Yep. You've got a little bit of shadows. Mm -hmm. Um, and now you're gonna get uh, just like limbs. And again, like some of the creepiest stuff that yeah. I love in movies are when little things like run around corners mm -hmm. and stuff and you don't see it exactly. Because that that's what we get in the school scene Terrifying. with the teacher because yeah. the gremlin is like mad that he took the blood from him. He's like, you're not still mad about that needle. Well, the gremlin kills him with the fucking needle. <laughs> and I think you might see like an arm or like a quick like shot. I've got a candy bar. I want you to come out and take a look. I want to take a look at you. Oh, grabs his arm, right? Uh, but you get the full reveal when Billy shows up and is yeah. like, hey, uh... What happened with that gremlin, Mr. So-and-so? There's, uh, there's, Where are you? There's so many good shots of, like, the gremlin, like, running around the room and, like, hitting shit. Yeah. And you hear it, like, ka -ka, and, like, saying all this shit and stuff. And then when Billy gets there, it, like, cuts his hand. It, like, it, like scratches his hand when he goes to go for the phone. And then it ends up, like, breaking into uh, the air vent. Right. And you hear it, like, 
rip it open and go inside. And then the after, the creepiest thing is the aftermath because the camera pans up and the grate is just ripped open oh, yeah. and there's like handprints and scratch marks and stuff. We, we do that is also right before that is our reveal of what they look like. So then like Billy's kind of trying to follow where this thing went yeah. and like you're like, oh fuck, what the hell? Now, now knowing that they're at his house, by the way, yeah. he well, doesn't like put that together yet. Yeah, he runs to the first aid because his hand's like bleeding out from this thing. And then this motherfucking gremlin just out of nowhere pops out of a cabinet screaming at him, oh, like man. rips out his shirt. You only see it for like a split second yeah. though, which is great because the camera pans over to Billy and it's like throwing shit at him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and again, is another thing where it jumps down and like breaks through the door mm -hmm. and you see it like running. You don't see it running, but you see the aftermath of it, the bus through the door. It's great. And, and you know, the handprints and shit. If you're watching this on tape, you could always rewind it. But if this is on TV or in the theater, you just see it, like you said, for a second and, and you're, you're like, like, oh shit. You're like, what was that? Yup. What, what is going on? But then he calls his mother and he's like, mom, they hatched. Get the fuck out of there. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, Billy, oh. and this whole time she hears like laughing and shit breaking upstairs. Yeah. She grabs like kitchen knives and uh, they're fucking with Gizmo, right? And they're like putting him up on a dartboard. Oh God, they Kevin McAllister, this guy. <laughs> Not literally, but I think a Kevin with the, the figures going yeah, down yeah. the uh, trolley. They, they, they throw him down the laundry chute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's on the phone with mom, and like it's such like it's a it's also like a meta movie too. A little bit, because yeah. the Gremlin's like phone home, and he like grabs the the uh, the wire and pulls yep. it out, <laughs> which is great, like the ET thing. Yep. And then mom has. I don't want to keep using the word iconic because I don't want to wear it out, but I feel like this scene's pretty iconic. This this kitchen brawl. Look, mom. Is such a badass, dude. Yeah. She is awesome. She is a monster. She could have easily just left. Yeah. This is a good <laughs> choice. Like we were talking about earlier where she gets murked by the gremlins, like her head In the first off. script, yeah. Yeah. This is such a better way to do this because it's so satisfying. To and me. also you get that full reveal of what these things are in yeah. the process. But again, the way she goes up into the attic. They're not yeah, there. Yeah. There's nothing there. Just the the leftover skin from the yeah, and you're like cocoon. and you're like waiting to see what's going to happen. And she's up there, and we all get startled by Johnny Mathis Ugh. because do you hear what I hear? Starts playing, and again, the, the shots record, yeah. these shots are so good because she goes downstairs to, and she sees the the turntable on. And if you look at mm -hmm. the at the uh, the head unit, there's footprints in the dust on yeah. top of it. <laughs> Which is great. Yeah, I like um, that. So, so she stops the record and she's like in the hallway looking around for him. And then like there's a gremlin shadow that comes up and then disappears. And then we get our first reveal because she sees it in the kitchen eating fucking gingerbread cookies. <laughs> well, she gets the first one in the salad spinner. This thing's picking out, dude. Yeah, it's like eating stuff in the mixer. And let me tell you something. It's terrifying. Yeah. Again, the way this is shot and the music, it's really scary. I would agree. Yeah. And then, like, you know, she does kill that first one pretty quickly, but the guts are all over the place. She and puts it in the mixer. Yep. She uh, she gets the next one with a knife. Stabs the shit out of and it. And it's like, you know, they keep showing this one, like, just like, like, still moving in the background. I'm like, yeah. can you finish that grab one off and cry out loud? <laughs> Fuck them. This one's throwing plates at her and she's uh, like a tray. I, well, she grabs that one and throws it in the fucking microwave. Oh, dude, she sprays <laughs> it in the face with like roach killer yeah, yeah. and then puts it in the microwave and this thing explodes. Oh, the fucking head. It's yeah. so good, man. Uh, and then did she kill another one? So there's three. So, so okay. So there's a total of. Because uh... Stripe's also there, right? Yeah. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, she said. F Corey Feldman says five new ones. So there's three. Yeah. So there's. So that's three. Three dead. So right. there's two left. All right, Stripe I know gets away. Where's the other one? So she's walking through the house, looking f like seeing where it is. Yeah, yeah. This is a great fake out where like uh, something's in the um the stocking and it's like moving, and you're like, oh, oh man, it's in the stocking. She beats the shit out of this. She kills like some toys. Now I remember. And yeah, the yeah. gremlin is in the Christmas tree, and it like falls on her and starts like ripping her like chest open and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Then Billy comes in. Grabs that fucking sword. Oh, dude. <laughs> cuts this thing's head off and the head flies into the fireplace. And lights on fire. Yeah, screaming. Ah! It's so good. And again, with that great gremlin score, this time with like violins and it's like yeah. ding, 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 ding. And Stripe wisely just watches this all go down and is like, all right, I'm piecing out. Jumps one, out the fucking window. One left, baby. They killed the whole clan. Yeah. Right? So Stripe's the last uh, gremlin. Well, except for that one running around somewhere in the school. Yeah, but they're not really worried about that one. Stripe is the one you should have been gunning for, but yeah. they don't know that yet because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Stripe knows how to multiply. He uh, apparently can sniff out water. He's got an agenda, dude. Some glub glub. He needs it. Yeah. Yeah. Because Billy kind of traces his ass to the fucking YMCA. 
and is like, huh, yeah, this isn't looking too good. Let's find this fucking gremlin ASAP. And uh, he tracks it to the YMCA. Yeah, yeah. He's a little late though, and like this is such a an, another scary part because like he's walking around with Gizmo. He finds Gizmo in the in the in the oh, uh, yeah, yeah. laundry, and um, the alarm is going off in the YMCA, and he goes to go shut it off, and he goes to, just as he's about to go open it and turn it off, he hears like stri- it goes off, and he hears Stripe sneeze inside. Yeah, and this thing jumps out, Bolts knocks him, him down, slashes his chest, and then like hops. Like frog hops into the pool. Cannonballs. Cannonballs holds his nose and everything. It's it's hilarious. Yeah. And like Gizmo's Pretty like, genius. oh no! It's it's genius though. It's, and then it's so good. You think like, okay, this is like halfway through the movie. How are they gonna top this? But uh they do. They they do, but first this whole pool is just filling <laughs> all, up with all just this explosions dry ice. Of, yeah. All yeah. this dry ice, all these flashing lights, and it's just so awesome. So now so now you got just instead of three or four, or maybe even a couple dozen, now you've got like hundreds of these things. Uh it's this awesome stop motion sequence where like stripe walks out. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, come on, yum yums. And then all of the gremlins start like jumping over each other and coming out into the streets. Yeah, it's it's like, really cool. It's like March of the Wooden Soldiers yeah, when they of. show up with the soldiers at the yeah. end. Uh, and then the chaos fucking begins. Oh man, yeah. They're like trying, he's like trying to explain to the cops that like there's these little creatures and all this stuff. And they're like, yeah, 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 whatever, yeah. kid. Uh, also, before we get too far away from it, Mr. Peltzer is now trying to get home and he calls home a few times. And like, there's a before the gremlin attack and, yeah. and shit hits the fan. Yeah. Like I've been saying this whole episode, but before that shit jumps into the fan, there's this hilarious visual in this phone call he has with his wife when she tries to use the the remote to answer oh, the yeah, phone. Yeah. He's like, "Yeah, the show's doing great." He's like, "A little above my pay grade, honestly." Robbie the robot's behind yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. But there's this hilarious gag off to the left where this guy is in like a time machine or yeah, something, ti- yeah. and it cuts away to the wife, and it cuts back, and the and guy's gone, and the, the other machine. people. Are like, oh my god, where'd he go? And Rand Peltzer's just like, yeah, this place is pretty good. It's a little bit more advanced. The competition's a little bit more advanced. I'm like, okay, visual gag. Did that guy explode? Did he actually time travel? Oh no, that was the H.G. Wells the time machine. He's gone. (laughs) I love He's that. He's going to fight shit. some Morlocks, dude. Uh, but they, yeah, and then Rand Peltzer shows up throughout just in these little gag scenes for the rest of the movies. He's trying to get home. Yeah. And like he has no idea. No. He just can't get in touch with his he, with he, his family. Yeah. <laughs> he gets the remotes down or something. Why are my batteries not charged? But yeah, so we get that whole scene, like Joe just said, where all the gremlins come out and uh, then uh we get, they like, start destroying everything. Yeah, and we get like little vignettes now. So like we get the Futtermans at home. <laughs> And Mr. Fudderman is trying to watch TV, and the TV gets all fucked up. I gotta mess with the satellite dish. Goddamn foreign TVs! It should have got a zenith. <laughs> so he goes outside uh, to see if anything's wrong with the antenna, and uh, the gremlins start up the Kentucky Harvester and drive it through his fucking house. Like they chase him into his house and they plow into the house. This this scene has just burned into my brain. It's so just good, the music and this thing chasing him. I still. Have to sit here and wonder how the fuck Mr. Futterman's alive in the second one, but don't, again, don't overthink it, Sean. What did you say earlier? There's gremlins, there's gremlins in my cab! Yeah, it's great character. Dick uh, Miller is always great, and he's great here. But uh, yeah, we get Mrs. Deagle gets her comeuppance. Also, a, kind of a funny detail that she's also a cat woman. Yeah, with she's, all a, the she's cats. a crazy cat lady. There's also just before that, there's like a bunch of town shenanigans where like they 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 fuck with the stoplight. There's yeah. a car crash, and um, there's a gremlin in a mailbox and like <laughs> bites this guy's hand. Yeah. It's great. Uh, yeah, so so. Uh, Mrs. Right. De- Mrs. Deagle's at her house and yeah. she's feeding her cats. She's like, "Oh, good old Dollar Bill," and blah blah blah. All yeah, that's all the names are the money name bags. Money. Yeah. yeah. So she hears carolers outside. She's like, "Carolers, I hate the little bastards. I'll I'll give them what for." She's gonna throw cold water on them. She needs to hire the Adams family. They got hot oil. They pour oh, on. Oh my them. god! Yeah, that's horrible. Um, so she goes to go throw water on them, which is also ironic. Um, and it's all gremlins. And they're all dressed up with like like scarves and earmuffs and caroling books, and they're all singing the Gremlin song. I love it's it. It's so good. It's one of my favorite parts. It's it's uh, great. And then they yeah, go yeah. in and they attack the shit out of her. And she has one of those like uh, chairs that goes up the stairs on like a, well, a machine. Well, one of them sneaks in through the cat door, which is yes. creepy, and like fucks with her chair. Yeah, yeah. Put, hits the lever up all the way yeah. up to eleven, and then she gets shot <laughs> she at full button. speed on this fucking chair up this spiral like staircase. 
and launched out the window. Dude, she gets rocketed out the window. Onto the streets. Into the street, baby. Uh, you know, irony at its best. Yeah. And yeah, this woman's dead as shit. The cops pull up. They're like, holy shit, was that Mrs. Diggle? <laughs> oh, yeah. One of the cops, by the way, is Jonathan Banks. Oh, uh, yeah. Fa- you know, he's f- famous for many roles. Yeah. More recently, Mike from Breaking Bad. Yeah. And it's always fun seeing him in a younger mm-hmm. role back in the day. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Jonathan Banks yeah, is in this. He's yeah, he's great. Who's, um, who's a naysayer at first. Yeah. And then, like, the, like the sheriff gets the first couple calls about gremlins, and is like, "All right, maybe." <laughs> and Jonathan Banks at first is like, "Yeah, bullshit, bullshit." Yeah. And then he's running with his tail between his legs <laughs> when he sees this. The Futtermans are like, "Oh my god, the Futtermans are dead!" But you don't actually see it. Yeah. But Mrs. Deagle <laughs> is on the road. Is roadkill. Yeah, gr- like grease stain. Th- she's done. Jonathan Banks is in the car, and he's and he's like, he's like, "Oh my god, Frank, is that what's his face? He plays Santa every year." And he's like. Yeah, but what the hell is he doing now? What's oh, that yeah. stuff he's got all over him? The Santa guy running out, and, and he, the gremlins are on him. The gremlin is like around this guy's neck and like trying to get into the cop car. Yeah. It's so good. And the cop car is getting attacked by gremlins. They, they rip just... it. They rip their their brakes out. Yeah. And they end up like crashing into a, a a pickup truck. It's chaos. I don't yeah. know how many times I can say it, but it's yeah. pure chaos. It's what you expect these things to do. Uh, meanwhile, Billy, Gizmo, and Kate are now like, huh? We should probably do something about this. Again, we get a little call back here on the radio of um, Rock and Ricky. <laughs> Rock and Ricky's not doing too well. Like, he's like, Rock and Ricky's getting tired of all this Halloween crap. And, he, and he's like, he's like, hey, hey, what's going on back there? Is there some Rock and Ricky fans? He's like, you're not Rock and Ricky fans. And like, I guess the gremlins take over the yeah, radio exactly. station. But we get the Dory's Tavern scene first. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. Kate's still working. You're right. This is the this is the best. This is Gremlins Mega Madness. This is when they're drinking the Mega beer. Mega Madness Super badness uh, it's so good this this talk about critters too uh this is a scene i guess the critters too took a page out of this movie's yeah. book but uh this is the first time you get a lot of these gremlins on screen that aren't just stop motion that are puppets just doing crazy shit in this bar they are walking around they're sitting at the bar they're drinking beer they're smoking cigarettes they're fucking they're singing they're swinging from the the fan <laughs> they're eating popcorn they're eating pretzels. popcorn they're shooting each other with gambling. guns they're gambling <laughs> there's a female gremlin only one just like only the one. sequel <laughs> hanging out with stripe because stripes like the fucking mob boss or something <laughs> kind of uh and yeah Phoebe Cates is just like somehow breaking her ass trying to make this work. I guess assuming if she doesn't serve the gremlins, they'll kill her. Probably. Uh, and again, I'll make the joke again because I already said it a few times, but they're drinking beer, spilling it all over themselves. Oh, the doesn't one, count as water, I the, guess. The one gremlin's got the tap and he's just pouring it in his mouth. His belly's getting all huge. It's funny. It's great. Whatever. The Mega Madness scene again. The Mega Madness kicks up and yes. uh, the the gremlin like uh, with the... Like warmers oh, on, like God. dancing and like break dancing and stuff. Oh, so that good. part is fucking the yeah. footloose scene. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's great. A lot of visual gags. Flash dance. Flash dance. There you go. And um, then, uh, what are this? Billy show up there? Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, they're there. There's like a flasher gremlin and he like flashes them. There's right. like, there's like gremlins like dumping, like, like one looks away, he like taps him on the shoulder and he like dumps like cigarettes into his beer and oh my shit. God. There's all these, so little, much happening. all these little funny gags that you need to watch like three or four times. But, uh, Phoebe Cates, figures out that bright light hurts them because she goes to light their cigarettes and they like keep backing up from it. Right, she takes takes in the pictures they with take the pictures Polaroid, to get her, to get yeah. around them and she's about to get shot by like the mugger gremlin with right, the ski mask. On. He's got a, a ski mask on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Billy rides up and has the uh high beams on so that she's able to get out. Right, he put, he basically crashes into the building just yeah. about and then the car won't start and then they get the hell out of there. And I think there's this where where Phoebe Cates gives the more detailed version of why she doesn't like Christmas. Yeah, so there's like more chaos uh, and there's people falling out of windows and gremlins. You see gremlins up in uh people's windows. This is where you get those silhouettes where they might be actually eating people. Oh, like eating people, <laughs> wrecking cars killing people in the street yeah and uh they run into the bank yes um and they're like man the gremlins hit this place too <laughs> it wasn't the mass this time yeah now there was a deleted scene here with judge reinhold in the vault oh so he actually does get his come he up comes and... back well no he comes back and he's like hiding in the vault oh. and they like talk to him for a little bit and he stays in the vault i guess we didn't need that clearly but yeah. i would like to at least see that yeah i mean it's on the dvd oh, okay yeah. i'll look that up but yeah, Phoebe Cates does her whole monologue here about her dad dressing up like Santa Claus and like this is heavy. Now I look, I guess this was intended for some like black humor thing, but like it's just dark for the sake of being dark. Sure, but it doesn't read that way to me. It doesn't mm-hmm. read as a funny thing. And they parody it in the second film with the Abe Lincoln guy and the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, right. And, oh, they yeah, make, and they make and they make fun yeah. of it. And they're like yeah yeah whatever, let's go. And like. I just don't see the humor in this, but I but I think it adds 
a little bit more depth to the character. I think it's a good scene. I think it's a really good scene. I, I would agree with that. I didn't realize that that was meant to be a comedy scene. From or... what I understand, Joe Dante meant, meant it, to, it be, as one. to be like a dark comedy scene, and Steven Spielberg was like, this doesn't read right at all. Maybe it's the way it was delivered, or maybe the, 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 the script was altered between that first and second version. I guess so, but I, I think it's good, and I think it's, yeah. I think it's sad and adds to her character there's no way a story about her father dressed in a santa costume slipping on the chimney and breaking his neck was gonna be a lighthearted moment no, and like dying <laughs> and then like lighting the chimney and noticing the smell and yeah. then like the fireman like pulled out her dad thinking it would be a dead cat or something but yeah it's her yeah. dad yeah uh it's it's disturbing but I guess the idea, or, or rather the point, is that yeah, she doesn't like Christmas, and this is just adding literal yeah. fuel to that fire. Yeah. So they run back outside, and it's all quiet. Mm. And uh, they're like, where the hell are they all? And then they see them going into the movie theater. Right. So they go into the movie theater, and they're I, watch- there's like all these shenanigans in the, in the film booth and stuff, and it's just a theater full of gremlins doing all kinds of crazy shit, smoking, drinking, eating candy, um, singing. hanging out, singing. They, they play Snow White. They love that movie. They love it so much. Gizmo does too. He's even humming. Hi ho, hi ho. Yeah. <laughs> They're all singing the hi ho song. My favorite gremlin in this scene is the one with the popcorn bags on his ears, Dog. going <laughs> like laughing. That's how you get the personality in this yeah, yeah, one. Yeah. Just having the puppets do and wear weird wacky shit. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they end up coming up with a plan to blow up the movie theater. That's um, a good plan. So like Billy turns the gas on and like leaves a rag down, and uh, they're going to leave. And the gremlins, like, the real like stops, and the gremlins, like, spot them behind the screen. And there's this really cool animated sequence of all of them, like, running up to the screen and then, like, slashing it and, like, jumping through it. And even them, like, running down the hall, like, the back alley in the movie theater is really creepy. And, like, the way that it's done is really creepy. Well, especially, like, you can assume that this plan is going to work, but it's not guaranteed. Like, they're still on their heels. Well... They blow the shit out of this movie theater. <laughs> they totally do. And they're all dead. Like, you see the gremlins inside, like, running around on fire and oh, stuff. Yeah. It's, and it's great. Yeah. Stripe is not in there, though. Well, he goes out for some candy. He goes for some extra candy, and he's about to go back, and he sees the place blow up, and he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Quite literally. Yeah. And then uh, Billy and them notice him in the department store with all this like candy in his arms, and yeah. he drops it and runs back in. Yeah. And they're like, "Ah, fuck! He's the he's literally the problem gremlin. We yeah. need to stop his so ass. So we need to kill him before he makes more, yeah, right? Because he will. So this department, this whole department store sequence is again really creepy, man. The way that it's lit and the way that it's shot is just really weird. It's like whimsical, but also. Uh, scary. This is like the the creepiest scene of the whole film because it's it's very dark. Yeah. Uh, Stripe is actively trying to kill Billy, but like it's also funny because like Stripe's yeah. riding a skateboard at one point. Yeah. He's riding a tricycle, and that's kind of shooting funny. baseballs at him. And well, stuff. well, that's that's not the funny part. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Uh, well, I guess so. Not as funny as him on the skateboard. You're right. He's on the skateboard with like an arm full of candy. Yeah, no, that, I guess comparatively, you're yeah. right. And uh, so they're tracking him down, and Phoebe Cates is trying to turn on all the lights and stuff. And Gizmo has his own plans. He gets in his little car. He gets in his little his little Barbie Corvette and starts driving it around. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, but the whole like face off between Billy and Stripe is great too because like he scares the shit out of Billy because he like he's on a like camera and he's like his face is all on the different screens and yep. stuff. And then like you said, like he ends up shooting Billy with like a uh, uh, a baseball uh, pitching machine. Yeah, well, it's not supposed to be funny. I just think it's kind of funny, but also he's throwing fucking uh, blades. He's at throwing him and fucking stuff. Saw, saw blades, blades at him. Uh, he shoots him with a fucking crossbow yes. in the arm, and like, then he gets a chainsaw. Which for the longest time, again, I've seen this a hundred times, but yeah. for some reason I thought he had a mini chainsaw. But I'm like, no, that is just a full size chainsaw. This the guy's going after an electric really chainsaw. With. Yeah, and this is a creepy shot too because he comes like out of the clothes rack with a chainsaw and he's like running at Billy and this whole shot of like pushing in towards him and Billy just has a baseball bat like fending off the chainsaw like it's crazy like what if this went through the bat and just went into Billy's face and cut it in half it could you know what I yeah. mean it's intense yeah and then eventually Stripe just kind of gets away from Billy well they the, get tur- away from him Phoebe, sorry Phoebe Kate's turned the lights on and oh, blinds Stripe and like the electric chainsaw like pulls him off Right, yeah, 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 yeah. And he okay, ends up hitting yeah. his head and shit, but he wakes up and he sees the fountain and then he sees a gun in the case. So he, he has a fucking revolver and he goes to the fountain to go start it all over again. Right, yeah, exactly. And he's shooting at Billy as Billy's trying to approach him, like, nat, nat, Billy. Yeah, dad, nat. Ro- dad rolls up and Barney's outside and Barney yeah. jumps out and goes into the store. Barney's got to get his uh, 15 seconds of fame yeah. for some reason. Gizmo's driving around, almost hits the dog. He's like, woof, woof. 
He goes up a fucking <laughs> shovel. <laughs> he almost, well, well, Stripe almost kills Billy. He's like shooting yeah, at yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, Gizmo, he you know flies in the air, grabs the uh, the wire that holds the uh, the shade, yeah. but he misses. Yeah. And then you know Stripe has the gun and he does shoot at Gizmo, but he totally misses it. Yeah. And Gizmo jumps up and grabs it at the last second. <laughs> grabs the 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 string and he like flies up and like whacks his head on the ceiling and the shades fly open. Meanwhile, yeah. while this is happening, like. Stripe is in the water and the, the his oh, back is bubbling. He, it's bubbling. <laughs> like his finger is in it. Like ET yeah. phone home, it lights up and oh, shit. Oh, I love how he does it when he's like, hey, hey, Billy. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and his back's bubbling and stuff, and he's yeah. about to like uh multiply. And the sun hits him and he just starts to melt like the fucking wicked witch of the West, dude. Oh, yeah. He goes full vampire. Like, like the effects on this are so gooey and awesome. Like his eyes go white and his skin mm. starts melting and bubbling and pussing and popping. Um, it's so good. Good. And and I do love the I mean it's cliche but I like the cliche of the final jump scare. Oh dude, he his ass falls into the pond with a bloop, and uh, yeah yeah you get that final one where he jumps out. It's basically just the skeleton and some brain matter, and it just falls and <laughs> skeleton, melts. Like, some pops more. out of the water. I love how like also the bones don't stay. They yeah. they also like melt into a puddle of crap which you know kind of lines up with what they presented so far yeah. based on how the other ones were taken care of it's pretty great the, so, the final death uh scream of stripe as billy and and gizmo and them watch on and dad's like the fuck did i miss it's like that's the magua yes rand that's the magua yeah by the way uh did you see that old man behind you he's gonna <laughs> follow us home for the final scene <laughs> So it's all sunshine and roses. Everybody's licking their wounds, and everybody's cozy at home for Billy, Chris, B- Billy Christmas and Kate Day. Share a kiss. Billy and Kate share a kiss uh, over Gizmo, and uh, this is great too because there's like a newscast comes on. Yeah. Now this guy is also from The Howling too. He's oh. he's uh, he's one of the news anchors uh, at the um, same place that D Wallace is. <laughs> okay. And uh, they're watching, and then all of a sudden, uh, the the old Chinese man appears in the house. And they're like, "Holy shit! We, where'd you come from?" And he's like, "And he's like, I've come for the Mogwai. I came from Chinatown. <laughs> Literally, he walked there from Chinatown. I guess I followed your father. I was in his truck the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. He was like, who knows? The timing is impeccable. He yeah. had, I don't know. I, I think this is a great scene because, like, he's like, I got to take the Mogwai back, and he's like, you know, you've done what uh, your people have always done with nature's gifts. You, you've abused them, and." You know, basically didn't didn't take it seriously. Didn't take it seriously. Took advantage of them and just kind of just ruined it. Yep. Which I like that. That's how they kind of get that in there. Like, yeah, that really wasn't the point in the movie, but on some level, it kind I of mean, is it kind the underlying. It kind of is, especially what the gremlins themselves yeah. represent. You know, and what they do in their shenanigans. Um, you know, he's just like, you don't understand. You're not ready. You know, maybe one day, uh, you'll learn, and Mogwai will be waiting. Maybe one day my shop will be destroyed in a, <laughs> oh, no, uh, by the te- clamp network. Yeah, and uh, the Mogwai will escape and return to you, but don't think too hard on that. Yeah, maybe John Glover will make me... No, Robert Picardo is going to make him an offer, and he's like, hmm, you're not going to take it? Well, we're just going to knock down your entire building with you in it. Right. I don't know why I know all this, but uh, <laughs> yes, you're not ready. So then there's one last gag where like Rand tries to give him the smokeless ashtray. Yeah. He's like, a man in gas station tried to sell me. Because yeah. earlier he sells it to the fucking guy at the gas yeah, station. Yeah, and he's like, that's yeah. very generous and blah, blah, blah. So he ends up leaving, and he says goodbye to Billy. You know, Mogwai says goodbye to Billy, or excuse me, Gizmo says goodbye to Billy. Right. And he's like, you understand what he's saying? He's like, to to hear, one has to, only has to listen. And I thought that was kind of sweet, too. Well, because then he actually hears what he says. And he's yeah. like, bye, Billy. Bye, Billy. Yeah, it's really cute. Yeah, it is really cute. I, I love Billy and Gizmo. Yeah, me too. I mean, it's a puppet and an actor, but they, they really sell it. In Here's the, film. the thing. It's a movie. No, yeah. I just, it, yeah. it feels real. It feels real. <laughs> it feels real. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, uh, they're, they're Bond, you know. And then, you know, uh, Chinese grandfather walks into the moonlight, dude. And he walks off into the, the, the moon set. Yeah. Whatever you want to call yeah. that. It's cold out there. I thought he'd have a, like a better getting, coat. Getting back in Peltzer's trunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just waiting for him to go back There's to Chinatown. There's no taxi or anything? Yeah. yeah. Him and Gizmo are hanging out for a while. Yeah, maybe. So yeah, man, that was Gremlins. What uh, what uh, gift is this under our tree? Ah, uh, this is uh, I don't know. I'll just go back to the old standby. This is the Nintendo sixty four. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is one of the best Christmas movies ever. Uh, in my opinion, uh, 
this is a really fun film no matter what time of year you watch it, but when you have it on during the holidays, when the snow is on the ground, ideally. It's the best time to watch uh, it. Yeah, it's Christmas time. Without a doubt. And uh, this is definitely, like we said this earlier, but it is a gateway horror film without a doubt. And uh, like I said earlier, and Joe even said himself, watch this a lot as a kid. Uh, it was on constant rotation all through the year, but especially around Christmas. Not just once, not twice. You'd have it on all week, yeah. all month. Oh, You'd yeah. be watching Gremlins uh, between all the other films, the Christmas stories and the Home Alones and everything else. But uh, this is a film that doesn't get worse with age. It gets better. It's like uh, a fine wine, baby. It, it is. And I didn't really talk about this in the review portion itself, but... A lot of the uh, effects films uh, over the years, you know, you when you watch them years removed, it's like, man, like I still like this movie, but these do not hold up. Like Gremlins holds up so well. I think so. And the effects are just like they were top notch at the time and they still are top notch. The illusion is very much sold. Yes, yeah. exactly. And just the, the charm of these puppets. Uh, and these animatronics and uh, just the way that they're presented on film, just especially in those scenes where there's multiple gremlins on the screen, like yeah. the bar and the movie scene especially, but just in general, Gizmo, Stripe, uh, mm. the random gremlins, they're yeah. all just, just the whole effect of this film could easily have uh, shit the bed if not handled right back when 100%, it came out. yeah. And uh, Joe Dante and his crew just nailed every element of this film. Spielberg even, given his two cents of what they should or not do. I mean, he has thrown his produced, uh, or his producer credit, rather. Right, it is, you know, Steven Spielberg presents Gremlins. It's ex yeah, he, ex he executive produced. He, he he made this film happen. Right, yeah. so mm -hmm. uh, there's also that. And you kind of can feel, and you can feel Chris Columbus, who wrote it. You can kind of feel, if you know these directors and these writers, you kind of feel like they're... Uh, print on the film throughout big time um and i what am i really trying to say here is that this is just kind of like one of those gifts you're waiting for under the tree you get it you you're really excited you got it you didn't know if you were gonna get it but when you got it it was a real pleasant and a surprise it was a it was a memory that stuck with you for a long time and you know there's those memes online i don't know if they're as relevant today but for years that was the meme online that video of that kid getting the n64, n64 yeah. and flipping out so just think of a gift that you were waiting for for a long time and you got it and you were really happy to your parents or Santa or that relative or friend that got you that gift and Gremlins is that gift uh, I'll never forget this film I try to watch it every year uh, and it's just uh, it gets better every viewing 100% man and like and I'm gonna echo that sentiment with you know comparing it to the Red Rider BB gun yeah oh, there you, you go know, like that, I think that's the best analogy for it where it's like like you just said like the Christmas gift that you that you've wanted all year and you're finally getting it yeah um it's for me. It's it's very much a Christmas movie, mm -hmm. but it's a near perfect horror comedy horror movie. For oh me. yeah, it's the be It's it's the top the top tier. It's top tier. It's a little creature movie. It's a little rubber monster movie, and it's funny and it's scary. Mm -hmm. It's well acted. the The score is fantastic, and and like again, the cinematography. If the, the Joe Dante's movies always fill me with like I don't want to say wonder per se but like there is this atmosphere that I absolutely love about it it's the angles it's the lighting it's those Venetian blinds it, it's a whole feeling that um, is a very bold fingerprint you he's know? great at getting you immersed in his movies yeah um, it's paced really well um, I think it, it, you know, for it, this is one of those movies where I'm so glad they took uh, a chance on it. Yeah. And what we got from it. I mean, it, it's a classic. It's it's one of the best of the best of the best uh, creature movies, blockbusters, um, and comedy horror movies of all time. It's a yearly watch. Like you said, it's a very special movie to me. Um, and kind of like where my affinity for these types of movies comes from and like little rubber monster movies comes from and special effects for sure. Um, there's a myriad of techniques in this that are just incredible. And it's it's a lot of money. $11 million is a lot of money, but it also has this kind of sort of low budget charm to it. Oh, yeah. And I think that's what I was trying to say earlier. Like it's not super, super refined polish, no. but I think it lends to the realism of the movie itself. Um and again, the the having shooting the movie on sets and um, the way it's lit and the way it's shot really enhances the experience of the the this horror fantasy movie we're trying to tell, you know, and the story we're trying to tell. Something I missed at the beginning was um, we're still talking about Gremlins. 
obviously yeah, on the oh, yeah. show, but like we we were forgot to mention um, Secrets of the Mogwai, which is a cartoon that's out right now. I believe on wow. HBO Max. Really, um, I've never seen it, but it is very much like. So my only problem with that is like it's super geared towards kids. Uh, like almost like like this too mo- much. like this again like we mentioned earlier with Ghostbusters like this movie isn't necessarily for kids per se but kids could watch it, I yeah. would say just like in the beginning of the episode you know this is a great this is an, actually it's it's almost the perfect uh, gateway horror movie because there's enough funny about it but yeah. there's also a de- a lot of scary shit about it but I would say that like I wouldn't. I mean, you be the judge. I, it's, I, they're your kids, but you be the sure. judge. But like, I, I mean, I saw this when I was probably like six. But like, I could see some people maybe showing to these kids when they're like nine. I, I, there's a few things besides the, the the violence. Not that we really ever go down this rabbit hole, but since we're talking about yeah. it, uh, I feel like some of the darker things might just go over a kid's head because it's a lot of like that Christmas story thing about her father and then just some of those like little more fringe elements that might go over a kid's head. That'll that... go over their head but like the gremlins aren't going to go yeah, over their head. That's that, true. There's yeah. a little thing running around the house hurting some, hurting yeah, people. That's you know? true. Yeah. Causing mischief and havoc and stuff. I mean I thought it was funny as hell when I was a kid. That, yeah. It yeah. scared me but like it was also like oh they're drinking beer and it's yeah, funny. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's just a great time. It's a it's a classic. I'm glad we covered it. Mm. I did not expect to do this as our first Joe Dante movie but <laughs> right. um, I'm glad we did and especially for the holiday season because I think it's a great episode to close out the season with. Well, that too. Um, this is the last episode of season six, dude. Kind of crazy. Um, it's been a wild ride this year. And I'm glad we ended it on a very high note mm, going same. into the new year. Um, and yeah, if you haven't seen Gremlins, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I mean, we just told you the whole movie, but yeah. yes, go watch fucking Gremlins. And then, you know, watch a second one. Or if you're like Joe, just, you know, put it on your watch list. Come back to it a little later. I'm going to watch Gremlins again yeah. before this holiday season is over. So how about them apples? How about them mogwais? How about them fur balls? Well, I don't know about fur balls, but what I do know is if you want some more movie dumpster content, you can check out patreon.com slash movie dumpster. Uh, you can sign up for only $2 a month and get yourself an ad-free version of the audio version of the show. Plus, we got a lot of bonus videos, behind-the-scenes content, and we have more stuff like commentary tracks, watch-alongs, and uh, a bunch of other behind-the-scenes stuff, like I said. Uh, head over to Patreon and check that out. Yeah, and for no money at all, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, please like this video and share it if you dug it. And if you listen on your favorite podcast app, do us a favor and leave us a five-star review if you're enjoying the show. It's a Christmas miracle, folks. Okay? Do us a solid. Give us a, give us a little stocking stuffer. Give us a little something back. Leave that review. It really helps the show get out of the bottom of the dumpster into more eardrums, eyeballs, everything in between. And that would be really great if you could do that for us. And if you want to get updates on the show, you can follow us on social media at Movie Dumpster or head over to MovieDumpsterPodcast.com uh, where we have little uh, updates on what's going on with the show. It tells you what kind of events we got coming up like Monster Mania, Crip Video Rentals, stuff in that vein. Uh, check it out, MovieDumpsterPodcast.com. And remember the rules. Don't feed Sean after midnight. Yeah, I get gas. So that's it. That's Gremlins from 1984, directed by Joe Dante. I'm Joe Lascola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Thanks for visiting the dumpster, and have a very Merry Christmas, Kwanzaa, and Hanukkah.